So it's Yusuf CC out wide towards Sean Densmore, who's advanced inside the Chile half down the right hand side. He's got Johnson in support. He takes carry the ball inside towards Max Harrop in the penalty area. Back to goal over towards Jake Maltz. Bit of space here in the centre of the park. Tries to dink it over towards John Johnson. Balls in the air though. Huge challenges, and in the end, it's back towards the keeper, Irwin. Irwin clears, not convincing though. Here is Andy White, who of course got sent off on Tuesday night for two yellow cards against Telford. Here's Cissé. Back to Maltz, the captain. Alti starting the better of the two sides in the opening minutes. Here's Cissé. Maltz tries to find Max Harrop, who of course is playing today in place of Josh Hancock. Inside towards Harrop. Back to Andy White. Harrop. Tries to play 1-2 with White. It falls back to Sean Williams. Over towards Densmore. But not the best of touch by Densmore, though. He just about keeps hold of possession. Now it's back to James Jones. Jones, just inside the Shirley half, takes the ball forward. Beats his man, though. Shirley win the ball back in midfield, though. But it's well cut out by Jake Maltz. Back to, the, back to Tony Thompson. Here's Max Harrop to Cissé. Harrop chips it into the box, no one's there. And in the end, Irwin, the goalkeeper, rolls it out to the left back. Adam Blakeman, he takes the ball forward. Up, up with the Chorley strikers now. And it falls back to the seven, Alex Newby in midfield, up against Sean Williams. Newby. Now it's uh, out wide with Blakeman, who's advanced forward. The ball's chips into the box. Headed away only as far as Williams. Williams concedes the throw in, and it will be a throw into Chorley on the far side, just in front of the community sports hall. It's taken on the left hand side to try to play the ball into the box. It breaks to Yusise, who can start the counter attack for Ultragum. Here's Max Harrop trying to beat his man. Max Harrop and Simon Richard, Andy White, sorry, both fall over. Now it's Andy Teague out wide at the right hand side, crossed in, headed away by Jones. Maltz heads it away up with Harrop. Now Cissé, who had a very impressive game once again on shooting out against Telford. Now here's Williams up towards Cissé. Cissé bringing the ball away for Ultragon. Now here's Jordan Hume out wide on the left hand side. Up against the defender, back to Cissé. Plow tries to play a quick one too with Jordan Hume. The idea was right, but the execution just wasn't there. And in the end, it goes out of play for a goal kick. But, um, good positive play um, here by Ultragon in the opening five minutes. But it will be a goal kick now to Matt Irwin inside the Shirley goal. But it's been a really good turnout, it seems here. I'm saying, I'm saying it's a thousand plus at least. Uh, the away end is fairly full. A good few hundred from Shirley today. So the goal kick's taken by Irwin. Won by Teague in midfield, only as far as Densmore who collects the ball on the right hand side. Densmore plays it long down the right hand side and that will fall to the six. Courtney Meppen Walter who will let it go out of play on the left hand side. And surely playing with that five in the back, got two centre back or three centre backs, sorry, with two wing backs, the two wing backs of course, Adam Blakeman and Courtney Meppen Walter. So here's Tony Thompson. Thompson plays up towards Cissé, won by Scott Lever, now Teague, won back by Cissé, Cissé runs in field, plays it out wide towards Jordan Hume, good play by Cissé there, Hume inside the box now up against his man, couldn't quite manoeuvre space to get the shot away, and in the end it's cleared by Chorley, up towards the striker Josh Wilson, but Tom Hannigan will like, guide out of play, so Hannigan uh, will let Andy White take the throw in, Guilty fans in very good voice along with the Chorley fans in the away end. Now it's a midfield with Chorley. Number eight, Jake Cottrell. Up towards Marcus Carver. Lays it off towards Elliot Newby, the exalted player, of course, on loan at the Jay Davison Stadium a few years ago when uh, we got relegated, of course, in the conference north. He was one of the few bright sparks from that season, Elliot Newby. Here's Jake Malt up towards Jordan Hume. Back to goal. Can't quite get control of the ball. And then the end is played back by. Steve Jordan to the keeper Owen. Now Mepp and Walter to Jordan. In the back four, Chorley can't quite clear the ball away from their defence. In the end, the force back to Irwin in the Chorley goal. 
Ewan urging his players forward. He's going to kick it long. Up towards Marcus Carver, the danger man up front for uh, Chorley this afternoon. He lays it back to Blakeman. Johnson intercepts. Now it's Jones. Got a bit of space here for Johnson to turn with the ball. Brings it forward. Goes over the halfway line. Now over towards Andy White. Oh, it's a strong first touch by White. Just can't keep holding the ball. Now it's Chorley in possession. It's Newby in the field. And the referee's going to pull the play back here for. Looks like Andy White's down injured there. Yes, uh, I didn't really see what happened there. But he will be pulled back. So Andy White is a player down here. We are having some few, uh, few difficulties with the commentary here, of course. Um, you might have had a few problems at the start of the game there uh, with some sound disruption, so I do apologise for that. We are trying to sort those problems out as we speak. But uh, we have got Andy White down injured at the moment. Sorry about the delay in the passing over, but we're down to one microphone that works, unfortunately. Listeners, what happened there was Andy White, actually a heavy touch from Andy White, he overran the ball a bit, gave Andy Teague the chance to get in there, and in his effort to retrieve things, he picks up a pretty painful knock, but I think it was a collision sort of knock, one that will cause quite a bit of pain uh, at, the, at the moment, but one that will uh, not cause any lasting damage, I don't think. And Andy White's been treated, he's just come off to the sideline, uh, he's having his knee, his right knee, uh, having something applied to that to take the sting out of it, and I'm quite sure he'll be all right to carry on. John, so the game is back underway. And it's uh, Scott Lever. It's a bit of a chance clearance by Scott Lever there. He brought the ball down the right hand side, tried to play it down the line up towards uh, his colleague Elliot Newby on the right wing, uh, but it's a bit of a chance clearance. He goes out of play for a fair and two. White takes it, but gives it away. Fortunately, he's back in the, back in the control of Tom Hannigan, and his clearance is out of Spires Fatigue. Yusuf Cisse, and it will be another throw into the, visit the visitors who are playing in there. The white tops, oh, sorry, the yellow tops, I should say, the black shorts and the yellow socks. So here's Densmore towards Johnson, back to Densmore. Quick one, two, between the two right sided players, inside towards Jake Malt. Malt switches it over towards Andy White. Good play there by Malt. Here's White down the left hand side. Now Cisse on the left wing, puts back on his right foot inside towards shooting, back to score inside the area. Cisse goes down, play goes on. He in with, can he get a shot away? That's just about the classic example of Jordan Hume and what he does. Tight situation, defender on his back to the left of the six yard area, quite near the byline. A wriggle, a turn, a feint, past one man, could have shot then, thought, no, I can go another step forward, so there's less of an angle. Did that and then wrong foot to the keeper with a finish. Brilliant stuff, but well done to the referee because Cissé was fouled in the build up on the edge of the area. He went down looking for a whistle. The referee looked at him. He's obviously, the referee knows all about Jordan Hume. So he thought, no, I'm not going to stop it. Jordan might score here. Let the play go on. Sure enough, Hume scored. 1 0. I've got a question there defending as well, as well as because Chorley didn't really put much pressure on Jordan Hume there. He turned off really well, but he stood off a little bit, I felt. And uh, they let him have the shot, but I'm not complaining. It's really good play between CC and Hume down the left hand side. Hume got the space and it was a great finish at a near post, 1-0 to Altrigan and I must say it's been coming, we have been the better side in the opening 5-10 minutes of this game so there will be a throw in here um, for Andy White, it's for Altrigan he takes it back to Hannigan and that has silenced the Chorley fans, that's for sure, it's all Altrigan singing at the moment, now here's Andy White looking for an option Harrop cuts back back to White Chorley defending in numbers here, every man behind the ball. Alti building patiently. White dinks it down the, down, down the left hand side. Lever brings the ball down on his chest and clears it towards Wilson. Hannigan will collect the ball and plays it long towards Cissé. Cissé flicks it on towards Hume. Once again, really good play between Cissé and Hume. Hume has the ball, goes inside the box, but it's cut out well by Scott Lever in the end and cleared away only, only, only as far as Andy White. Alti looks to rebuild. Sean Densmore inside the Chorley half. 
taking the ball forward. Really positive play by the right back. Here's Max Harrop trying to cut back on his left foot. Can't quite do so. And it's cleared by Chorley. Only as far as Densmore inside the box. Shot by Densmore. Oh, it's a really good effort. Chorley are at sixes and sevens here. Really good play by Densmore there on his left foot. Yeah, it was. He had men in the middle who, who might have expected a pass, but you can't really blame Sean for that. He won possession inside the area on the right-hand side. Eyes lit up when he saw side of the goal, but uh, fairly routine save for the keeper. Yeah, you can't blame Denzi for having to go there. He was on his weaker side, but there was plenty of space to get a shot away, and uh, in the end, he was a comfortable save by Irwin. And here's Maltz. Over towards Densmore. Densmore looking for a pass, he's forced back though, he's crowded out by the Shawley players. Uh, poor first touch by Jones, is forced back to Thompson. Thompson clears it long, left foot to clear, it's up towards Hume. Hume wins it in the air, here's Harrop, bit of space to turn. Releasing Hume, Tisse by the left-hand side, gets inside the box here. It's a heavy first touch. The ball falls out towards the Shawley player who can um, clear the ball, he brings it away. But once again, really good play by Cissé. He's getting better with every game he plays for Altrincham. Surely appeal for a foul there, nothing's given. And it will be a throw into Altrincham. But John, once again, Cissé, really good player. there. Yeah, it was. In actual fact, the, the, the first touch was probably a little bit heavy, but such is his blistering pace. He still got there a fraction ahead of the keeper, but by that time, as soon as he hit the ball, it's going to get cannon back off the keeper, which is what happened. But uh, yeah, great play down the left by Cissé. Here's Hannigan back to Thompson. Thompson clears. Once again, looking for Cissé. Up against the captain for Chorley, Teague. Teague wins it in the air. Falls to Williams. Now here's Johnson back to Densmore. Really quick tempo game so far. Here's Williams over towards White. White brings the ball forward inside the Chorley half down the left hand side. He's got Harrop in support. Passes to Harrop. White takes. White carries the run on. It's a cross by Harrop, and it will be blocked, and it will go out of play for a, a throw in just in the corner flag inside the Chorley half. And we do require a new ball because the ball cannoned off the Chorley player and out of the ground. So just get a new ball on the pitch. About 12 minutes gone, and the score is Ultrican 1, Chorley 0. And it has been all Ultrican to be fair, especially since the goal as well. A really good start by the Robins. Here's Cissé. Crossed in by White, not convincing though, but Harrop has the ball inside the area. Really good play by Harrop. Really good skill. Not make this player. Can't quite find the man in the middle though. Here's Williams with a shot. Oh, he's just dragged it wide. But Sean, really good play there by Harrop. Couldn't quite find the man there. Well, that's another example of the sort of outrageous skill you just wouldn't expect to see at this level. You've got to see this on OT TV. You, you really have. The, it, it's difficult to describe. It was absolutely outrageous. A sort of a, 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 a back heel flick on the, right on the goal line. Completely wrong footed the defender who was marking him. Suddenly it opened up. It's just a shame about the final ball. Yeah, this is really good stuff, though. Quite similar, similar to the start we had against Chorley in the away fixture uh, earlier in the season. We had a really good start to that game as well. And it's panning out to be quite similar so far. And here's Scott Lever over, over towards Newby. Keeps the ball in play, gets the ball in, but it's cut out by Tom Hannigan and it will be a throw in. Just avoids going out of play for a corner, so it will be a throw in just near the corner flag for Chorley. Throw in towards Newby. Now it's back to Scott Lever. Pass into the box, so poor pass by Lever. Ulti clear. Now it's back in a defensive line of Chorley and it's forced back to Matthew Irwin. Matthew Irwin will look to uh, take his time on this one, just try and settle play down and they will play this ball long by the looks of it. So it's played long towards Maltzer, Malt really well to intercept there. Plays it down the line towards Jordan Hume, he's up against Jordan here. Really good play by Jordan Hume. Stays in play as well, oh, no it doesn't actually. I thought for a second he might have stayed in play near the corner flag, but uh, he does go out of play for a goal kick to But once again, really good pressuring by Jordan Hume. It's a nightmare to play against uh, for defenders when he's, in, when he's in the mood. He holds the ball up so well, he never stops running, and that was a, a fine example there. But uh, fortunately for Chorley, uh, he did go out of play for a goal kick on this occasion. So Matt Irwin will take. It takes long. One in the air by Teague, the captain. Now Wilson. There's Newby, left foot is shot, blocked quickly by Williams. Ball's up in the air. 
headed away by Densmore, looking for Johnson. Johnson's had a quite, a, quite a game so far, but he brings the ball down really well there. And here's Harrop, quick one two, back to Johnson. Plenty of space here for Cissé, but there's a massive bobble on the pitch there. And there's a left-footed shanks pass by Johnson in the end, which is quite a shame really, because there was plenty of space there for Cissé to potentially um, get the ball and run at the back line once again. As it is though, it's back at the Chorley back line. And it's uh, with Blakeman at left back. Pressured well by pressured well by Williams there. And uh, a foul's been given. Bit of a, a bit of a controversial one in my opinion. I think that's a fair tackle there by Densmore it was, sorry, not, not Williams. But um what do you make of that, Johnny? Like a fair tackle to me. To me too, and to the linesman who was much nearer than the referee. The linesman saw nothing wrong with it, started running down the direction we were playing in. As soon as the referee decided to blow and give a, uh, a free kick. Very harsh that. Yeah, it was a great tackle, and uh, Johnson was away down the right-hand side if he wasn't given as well, so a uh, bit of a dodgy call in my opinion, but it will be a free kick, which uh, when the keeper will take, takes it long. Maltz wins it, it's not a convincing header, and it will go out of play for a corner kick, yeah. Maltz couldn't quite hit it away from goal, instead he just flicks it, he just flicks the ball on, Tony Thompson couldn't quite keep it in play. And it will be a corner kick um, for Chorley, and they are very dangerous in these set pieces. We saw that in the away fixture uh, when it came from behind and won that game, of course. So we've got to be careful there. Very similar to Telford, who are very good from set pieces as well. Uh, but we did quite well on Tuesday night to keep them out for the majority of the game, even with 10 men for 20 minutes. So the corner's taken towards the near post, flicks on, but it's only flicks in the air. And that surely appeal for a handball. Uh, it's only a it's not a big appeal, I wouldn't say, but uh, it's going to play for another corner kick. On the same side as well, so the corner's going to be taken towards the near post again, headed away comfortably by Harrop. Surely can recycle possession. This newbie inside towards the other, the other newbie, Alex, out wide towards Blakeman, in swing and cross with his left foot. A foul's given, a foul's given for a push by Marcus Carver and Sean Densmore, John. Yeah, typical Dens, he's still got his clearing header in just in case the referee didn't blow. Well, that penalty appeal, was, I don't think it was a penalty personally, but the ball did bounce up awkwardly and seemed to catch James Jones slightly on the hand, but it's a very awkward, awkward bounce. There's certainly no intent there whatsoever, and I think the referee right to wave away the appeals. Yeah, very much agree with that, John. So the goal kick's taken by Thompson. Harrop will challenge against Scott Leve, it falls to Cissé, Cissé tries to flick it on towards Jordan Hume, yep, and the flag goes up, um, good header by Cissé, uh, trying to link up Hume once again, they've done that so well in this game so far, and against Telford of course, uh, they are starting to form a really good partnership I think, Cissé and Hume, but on this occasion Hume was offside, and the referee pulls the play back, so once again it's another chance for Irwin the keeper for Chorley to uh, clear this ball and get it into the box. Irwin takes, up towards head of Wilson, flicks on by Wilson, that goes straight out of play for a goal kick. So we are approaching the midway point of this first half, it's about 20 minutes gone, ulti one, surely nil. Just a reminder of this season's match sponsor, as always, Matt Ashley Moe's Garden Machinery. Whatever your gardening needs are, you'll find good quality machinery, tools, equipment and accessories at Ashley Moe's. Why not visit the Ashley Moe's website, ashleymoe's.com. You'll find the latest news, special offers, details on your after sales services, and a wider range of new and used products. And thank, and thank you once again for their continued support this season. So there will be a free kick here inside the centre circle, um, which, which will be uh, given to Ultram. It looks like a, an ultra player is down in the centre circle. I didn't quite see what happened there, John. Well, I'll tell you, but slightly more worryingly, Tom Hannigan's down. Uh, Jake Malt got a clatter in the back. He will get up and be all right, no doubt about that. But Tom Hannigan, I'm not sure what he's done. He's feeling his left thigh. That looks more of a worry because if that's if that's a, a muscle injury, which it looks like, you wonder whether he'll be able to continue. What happened there was I think something. Stephen Jordan can count himself very, very fortunate to get away the yellow card there because you think, oh well, he challenged for the ball, just caught, pushed, pushed him in the back. It's far worse than that. He ran at Malt from a distance, no chance of getting the ball whatsoever, and absolutely clattered him in the back and sent him over, and he's, that's why he's needed a bit of time to recover um, his senses and get back on the pitch, holding his head even now. That was a bad challenge from my, to my mind, at least the referee's having a, 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 a lengthy word with, jo with uh, Jordan now. That's not enough for me, that should be a yellow card. That was quite reckless by Jordan, no chance of winning the ball whatsoever, and he knew exactly what he was doing. 
Yeah, very much agree there, John. And whilst that was happening, there's been a massive development at Ashley Park. It is Stockport nil, Bly Spartans one, and it's Dan Maguire who has scored in the 90th minute there for Bly Spartans. They are in a great run of form at the moment, Bly Spartans, and they are, of course, challenging for those playoff positions themselves. So that is a massive game and a massive goal by uh, the Bly side there. One nil to Bly for Ashley Park. We'll keep you updated on that game as well. So we're still waiting for um, Tom Hannigan to get back on his feet here. Uh, the physio is on the pitch. Jay Mould's back on his feet, fortunately. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what the issue is here. He's, it looks like a leg issue, maybe a knee issue. Yeah, just a, I, I, he was holding his left thigh. It might, might be knee, but the, the worry is it's not something that happened through some sort of contact where you might think he's in a bit of pain, but he'll be all right. He'll shake it off. He's done something. That's the worry. It looks like he's done some sort of a muscle injury, or if it's his knee, then who knows? I hope not, I hope not ligament, but he's, in, he's still down and obviously in quite a bit of uh, uh, discomfort. So... Um, you just want to, and what, what shocking timing as well. What rotten uh, look if he, if he can't carry on because, of course, Billy Sastens has just gone back to crew. Crew have recalled him, so we've not got a great deal of crew there. The good thing is, he's walking off after having treatment. He's got to come off to this near sideline, but he is walking off okay, so perhaps he'll be okay to continue. Yeah, like you were saying there, John, we've got no recognised defenders on the bench. We have got Simon Richmond, Simon Richmond who can play at right back if needed, but. Um, there's no centre backs on the bench, so it's good to see that he's back on his feet and walking fairly comfortably anyway. He should be okay to continue. <coughs> so it will, will be a free kick inside the centre circle for Altrincham. Jake Malt takes it over towards Cisse, wins it in the air. Now here's, here's Jordan Hugh inside the area. Can he get a shot away? He's working his way towards goal. Back to Cisse, edge of the box. Cisse cuts back on his left foot near the byline. Oh, he goes for the shot. Went for a very speculative, ambitious shot there, Cisse. He's applauded by Ulti fans because he is he's a, a very bright prospect there. He's done so well, but I think on that occasion, uh, he went for the wrong choice there. And it will be a goal kick here for Chorley. And it will be Matto to take. So Irwin's going to take this long by the looks of it. And there was a few cheers in the away end when that goal went in at Blythe, um, Ashley Park when Blythe scored. That's, put, that's um, cheered him up a little bit. Here's uh, Sean Williams up in the air with uh, Harrop. And here's Jake Maltz looking to bring the ball down up towards Jordan Hume now. Can he hold the ball up? Can't quite do so and surely win the ball back. James Jones battles in the air against Marcus Carver. In the end it falls out to Sean Densmore right back. Right, uh, Densmore brings the ball forward. Good composed play there by the experienced right back. Really good play. Well, apparently the ball goes out of play but um, Lucky there by Sean Densmore because he did so well, but the ball just about went out of play. And it will be a throw in just inside the ulti half, which Blakeman can take at left back, just in front of the home dugout. Down the line he takes it. Wilson challenges. Here's Carver to Wilson. And at the edge of the box. Good play by Ulti. Here's John Johnson. Tries to find Hume, but in the end it goes straight through to um, Scott Leather. Here's Newby. Leather. Good one too. Tries to find Newby once again. Hannigan cuts it out. Here's White. Hannigan plays it long. That's towards Hume. Hume battles for it. Harrop's there to try and intervene as well, but the ball's played back by Shirley. Back to the keeper, Matthew. And so we are halfway through this first half. The score is Audrey 1, Shirley 0. I'll get a few words from John and then I'll hand you over to Brian. Yeah, cheers, Tim. So far, so good. I think we're playing really well. Good value for the 1-0 uh, lead, and we're looking pretty solid at the back as well. Brian. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a uh, good start by uh, the Robins, of course, uh, buoyed by that ninth-minute goal from Jordan Hume. That is a blatant foul by Scott Lever, just taken down uh, Yusufu uh, Cisse. I'm getting a lot of joy down uh, this left-hand side. Yeah, I think he says a real threat, isn't he? I, I said at the time, Brian, when uh, Ma I think it's Max Harrop playing through with the great ball. The first touch was a little bit heavy, but such is his pace. He still got there before the goalkeeper, but then the keeper, the keeper's proximity to him was such that he was able to block the shot. But he is, he's a real handful. He's got so much to his game. Pace we know all about, but he's, he's quite a clever player as well. Scott Leather uh, goes into the referee's uh, notebook there. And uh, certainly uh, a pretty uh, poor uh, challenge Although uh, yeah, not not um, not vicious or anything, just got it uh, got it wrong. But uh, first uh, name in the book is the former Altrincham central. Good uh, position this free kick. It's uh, just outside the area, left wing position, and it comes from Johnston. 
And it's a well-delivered uh, effort watched all the way by Matt Irwin in the Chorley uh, goal. One or two Altrincham players bearing down on him, but in the end, Irwin, a uh, good solid piece of uh, goalkeeping, keeping held on to it comfortably. Here's uh, Mepp and Walter inside to Blakeman. Good uh, play by Chorley this. Here's uh, Josh Wilson, but uh, Jake Maltz really uh, breaking that uh, move up that looked pretty promising. Jordan Hume a little bit over clever there and Altrick have lost uh, possession. Cottrell, left foot. Midfield just inside the Altrick half. Here's Mepp and Walter into uh, Alex Newby. Hannigan's broken that down. Here comes Jake uh, Malt. He's looking for uh, Cissé. It's an interesting ball. It's uh, picked up by the on loan man from Blackpool, Cissé. He's looking uh, bright and breezy this afternoon. Here comes uh, Andy White, left back position, finds Max Harrop. had a good start to the game. Here's uh, Harrop into Johnston, rolls under Johnston's uh, foot and uh, surely away, but they've lost it immediately. And um, that's a foul there by uh, Andy White on uh, Alex Newby. Altrigan won. Chorley nil Jordan Hume the goal scorer in the ninth minute. Fine individual goal uh, after some good uh, work by Yusifu Cisse. And uh, I would say just about uh, the right scoreline at the moment. Yes, I say so, Brian. I think we've started very, very brightly. We've been far more, we've carried far more of a threat when we've got forward uh, than Chorley have, show, have shown so far. Very few uh, problems at the back for us so far. Uh, the old hint that uh, of why Chorley are right up there at the top, but so far, really, we're in control of the game. Telford United have just taken the lead against uh, Curzon Ashton at the new Bucks head. Telford United won. Curzon Ashton nil goal after 28 minutes there. We don't know the uh, the goal scorer yet. So uh, here's Matt Irwin clearing his lines. Big long kick should be picked up by Densmore. Densmore crossfield pass intercepted by Teague, but Cisse's uh, picked it up. Good play by Cisse into the Chorley half. Here he goes, those long legs. Lovely ball by Cisse to Jordan Hume, right wing position, pulls it across. The good ball by Hume, intercepted by Scott Leather. But uh, you see face, you see Phil Cisse and Jordan Hume combining really well. Yeah, and the things as well, that, was, that starts with Cisse being bright enough and alert enough to intercept a, a Chorley pass. I think it's a Chorley player controlling the ball as he tries to do that. Cisse was on him in a, in a flash and away they went. That's been very typical of the way we've played so far generally. So the Robins keeping up the momentum here. They lead by one goal to nil. You're listening to Radio Robins on uh, RadioRobins.com or via the Mix LR app. A free kick to Altrincham over on the far side. Right wing position in front of the Smart Storage family stand. It's about uh, 30 yards from uh, goal. And uh, Sean Densmore having a, a word with... Uh, Courtney Meppen Walter, the uh, recently or much troubled Chorley Central defender. Uh, free kick is almost right on the byline for Johnston and uh, Harrop. Sort of over the ball. Bright sunshine here. Altering attacking the goal to our left, which is uh, full of Chorley fans behind the goal that Jordan Hume uh, scored in in the ninth minute. So Johnston's going to take this uh, free kick. Well, they've just left uh, Carver forward, two Altrincham uh, defenders marshalling him, Densmore and White. In it comes from Johnston. It's a header over the bar from Adam Blakeman. Good delivery by Johnston. Also, always had Blakeman uh, stretching and the Robins have a uh, corner. Good pressure. Yeah, absolutely. It was always difficult to deal with. And uh, you're right, uh, Brian Blakeman really was stretching for that. And, and when you're doing that and you don't get a proper forehead on it, it could go anywhere. Skim off the, off the top of the head into the roof of the net. That time it was off the top of his head and behind for a corner. Here goes. So the corners uh, from the right-hand uh, side. John Johnston is uh, going to uh, take it. And it comes, headed clear to Sean Williams. And uh, Williams uh, gets it all wrong there and it flies high and very much uh, wide over the bar. Altrincham 1, Chorley 0, Vanarama National League North uh, action. And uh, Matt Irwin takes the goal kick. And Telford have scored a second at the new Buckshead AFC. Telford United 2, Curzon Ashton 
nil. So uh, certainly on course for all three points this afternoon. Certainly did look a good side on Tuesday night and here back in December. Here's uh, Chorley breaking. Uh, Cottrell finds Carver, but uh, Carver can only stretch and knock the ball high into the air. And it's easily dealt with by Tony Thompson, who finds uh, Sean Densmore. Also under a little bit of pressure here defensively. Uh, ball's played forward, intercepted well by Mepp and Walter, but here's Harrop. Harrop to uh, well, Malt does well there. It's a foul on uh, Malt by Jake uh, Cottrell. We have got 31 minutes gone here. Jordan Hume, the scorer of the only goal. Big, big game for both sides. Of course, if results go really well today, Altrincham could be all but in the playoffs, but we'll have to wait and uh, see. Uh, Bly the head at Stockport uh, County. I believe uh, Stockport, a few Stockport fans will be listening to Radio Robins this afternoon as well as uh, obviously their own uh, favourites at Edgeley Park at the moment. The leaders are le losing and the second place team are losing. Bit of poor play by Altrincham, but it's uh, picked up by Josh Wilson. Finds Andy Teague, the uh, Magpies skipper, back to Scott Leather into the Altrincham half. Leather, right half position, comes forward to uh, Alex Newby, Newby to Teague, Teague knocks it forward, bit aimless, cleared by uh, Tom Hannigan, finds Sean Williams, good ball by Williams, into the uh, Chorley half, picked up by Jordan Hume, knocks it forward, can't, oh, Cissé's on his bike here, great ball by Hume, perfectly weighted, pulls across it, oh, that's a really good move, fine effort by John Johnston, that would have been a picture goal, but what a wonderfully weighted ball by Jordan Yes, yeah, really typically vibrant attacking play by Altrincham. We've seen it so often. A great ball by Jordan Hume. You thought mm, Cissé and the uh, fullback was it? Um, uh, not Adam Blake. It might be Adam Blake actually. Yeah, 50-50 uh, for that perhaps. Not a bit of it. It was in no time at all obvious that Cissé was going to get there first on his bike, as you said, Brian. It early cross hit with some pace, and Johnson messed it first time. What a picture what goal that would have been, as you say. But it's just wide at the left hand post by John Johnson. But great attacking play. FC United of Manchester nil, Kidderminster Harriers uh, one latest uh, score. So the teams that are uh, chasing Altrincham are doing pretty well this afternoon. Bly the head at Edgeley Park, which is a superb uh, effort. Telford uh, 2 0 up at home at two. Curzon, Kidderminster 1 0 up at FC United. Here's Max Harrop. Great ball by Harrop. Oh, it's actually a good piece of uh, defending. Uh, it almost died, looked like it had more legs on it than it ultimately did have and it died a bit and Leather was able to intercept, here's James Jones, good ball by James Jones, finds Johnston Johnston is uh, fouled by the huge frame of Courtney Mepp and Walter, former Manchester City and uh, Chul and uh, Stockport County man and it's a free kick to Altrincham, it's uh, 20 yards into the Chorley Hart, half right wing position just in front of the uh, the tunnel where Altrincham uh, emerged from at the start of each second half of every game and uh, here's Andy White White finds Cissé oh, uh, just couldn't get on to that but Cissé is having a really good uh, game here's Carver clever piece of play by Marcus uh, Carver but Andy White spotted the danger and covered really well uh, a little bit of uh, shenanigans between uh, the uh, Chorley number nine and uh, Andy White. Here's Andy Teague with a throw in right down in front of us. Goes White, heads out for a throw in. So uh, Chorley have won a bit of uh, ground there. Chester nil, York City won a defeat there for uh, Chester. Would almost certainly put an end to their playoff, uh, playoff hopes for the season. Chorley take the free kick, good into uh, the throw in, good interception by uh, Yusifu Cisse, and he's won the throw in, and uh, full of confidence the Robins. Yeah, uh, not, not only that, Brad, he puts an awful lot in, doesn't he? There he is chasing back and doing some defensive work, and doing it really well. I mean, you know, he's got these attacking qualities that make him stand out, but there's a lot more about him than that. He's a real team player as well. Yeah, he's having a, a really good game, as he did at uh, Telford and at Alfreton last uh, Saturday. Here's Josh Wilson. It's the ball back to Mepp and Walter. Mepp and Walter flicked on. Harrop gets something on it, but uh, Chorley's still in possession. Here's Elliot Newby. Finds uh, Wilson. Wilson, interesting cross, but comfortable for Tony Thompson. He does drop it, but fortunately, there's nobody stood on him, but uh, he was able to gather it at the second uh, attempt. So Altrincham lead by uh, Jordan Hume's goal after nine minutes here. 
Chorley are down, Stockport County are down at the moment. It's a fascinating tussle here. Good play by Jordan Hume, fouled by Steve Jordan. And uh, so you see who C says in the mood, Jordan Hume also in the mood today. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking, you know, whoever, whoever's on this side of the, uh, the uh, back line for Chorley uh, will be thinking of drawing draw the short straw, having to look after C say. But I think Steve Jordan's beginning to think that as well, trying to keep Jordan Hume under control. It's just about mission impossible. Remember, Chorley is one of the best defences uh, in the league, and Altrincham are really causing them some problems uh, this afternoon. Uh, here's a free kick. It's a central position, 45 yards from goal. Johnston launches it forward, flicked on, comes to James Jones, edge of the area. Decent uh, cross by uh, Jones, intercepted by Meppen uh, Walter, and another corner to the Robins. So the, uh, the Chorley fans behind the goal will have been lifted after the disappointment of conceding an early goal here. They'll have been lifted uh, by news from Edgeley Park with uh, Blythe taking uh, the lead one by one goal to nil. Dan Maguire, their leading scorer, has had a great season. And Blythe coming with a good charge when they came here a few weeks ago. Thought they'd pretty well uh, blown their bolt in terms of the playoffs, but uh, none of that. Free uh, throw in corner. Corner it is. Get it right third time, Flinney. Here's uh, Johnston. It's a deep one. Up goes uh, Hannigan, picked up by Alex Newby. Newby flicks it out, but only as far as Sean Williams. Williams knocks it uh, high into the air, picked up by Elliot Newby. Newby back to Teague. Teague, a oh, strange ball, intercepted by James Jones. Here's uh, Josh Wilson, and good piece of play. Uh, yeah, I think Tom Hannigan's been penalised there, a little bit harshly. Yeah, good play by uh, Sean Williams, who nicks the ball away, but uh, I think Hannigan has been harsh or certainly altering him in harshly penalised I thought he was just crowded out quite simply by by, uh, by numbers and it was ended up being Sean Williams taking the ball away I didn't see any sort of contact that would constitute a foul there Brian so it's a free kick to Chorley uh, just in the centre circle inside the altering half Adam Blakeman takes it left footed the deepish one up goes uh, oh watched all the way well confidently by Tony Thompson and he was on to that uh, really uh, smartly good to see so there's plenty of uh, confidence in this altering and performance just at the moment well there's a, a wayward ball from uh, James Jones who's uh, in quite a rich vein of form at the moment and he's won the header there that knocks it out for a further throw in surely have a throw in over on the far side edge of the penalty area Blakeman's going to take it Plenty of yellow shirts uh, forward. In fact, everybody bar Matt Irwin is in the Altrincham uh, half. Blake Miller goes for a longish one. Up goes uh, Densmore. Williams is up for the second header. Comes out to Leather. Leather's lost it to Cissé. Cissé. Calm play by Yusufu Cissé. Finds Jordan Hume. Hume's got uh, Johnston down the right-hand side, but it's intercepted by Mepp and Walter. Uh, the communication not quite right there. Probably Jordan's uh, fault rather than JJ. It's uh, Hannigan with the intercepting header, finds Cissé. Challenge comes in and Densmore jumps over the ball, wins the throw in. We have got uh, 39 minutes gone here, six plus added time to play. It's Altrincham 1, Chor Chorley nil in this Van Rahman National League North uh, fixture. Max Harrop to Densmore, Densmore plays it back to James Jones, Jones gets on his left foot, plays it back right footed to Tony Thompson, Thompson's looking for uh, White, finds him, decent ball but White's under pressure straight away, oh, it's a bad challenge there by Andy Teague, Altrincham fans baying for a uh, booking here and it is going to be a booking for the uh, Chorley uh, Skipper got his uh, challenge all wrong there, so that's Leather and Teague now in the book. Can't, not too many complaints about it. No, none whatsoever, no, it's quite a, quite a bad challenge, and I think he knew the card was going to come out. Referee explaining to him, you've got, really got no, no choice of that whatsoever, so that's Teague and Leather both there, having to watch their step for the rest of the game, Brian. They will, so, you know, Teague normally plays their central defence, but he's playing uh, almost as a wing back, he's certainly not a natural uh, wing back, whereas Blakeman on the other side certainly is. Uh, Blakeman had a dreadful first half against Altrincham at uh, Victory Park back in uh, January, but was superb in the second half and certainly instrumental in uh, Chorley turning it round from a 1 0 deficit to come out 4 1 winners. And certainly Blakeman's one of the uh, players that Altrincham will need to keep a big out, eye out for in this game. 
Balls are played forward. Uh, Leather's challenging uh, Hugh. Welshman fans uh, want the free kick. They don't get it. Here's Cottrell. Good ball by Cottrell out to Blakeman. Blakeman plays it forward to uh, Alex Newby. Uh, the ball's with Wilson. Wilson out wide to, Ale uh, to Elliot Newby. Good play. Elliot Newby's got a chance here. It's a good shot. And Tony Thompson's done well there because he's got uh, Alex Newby bearing uh, down on him. Sort of a cross, sort of a shot. But Thompson had a lot to deal with there because do I go for it, do I not? In the end, he's made a very good and brave save. Yeah, lots to think about there, Brian. So it was curling just beyond the far post. So I was thinking, can I leave it? Because it will go wide. If I leave it, will one of these two Chorley players bearing down on me get a foot to it? You've got to take all that into consideration in about 1.5 seconds. And he made the right decision and he made a good save, held onto the ball well under real pressure. So, well, again, it's just indicative of the, of the form and the confidence that uh, Thompson's showing at the moment. Yeah, good, uh, he's had a good half, uh, Tony Thompson. Uh, Chorley haven't really created an absolute clear-cut opportunity, but uh, there was certainly some danger there. Elliot Newby had some space, created the space well, curling left foot. Uh, you know, look, difficult to say whether it was a cross or a shot, but uh, Thompson dealt with it very, very well. Throw in uh, from Mepper Walter back to his goalkeeper, Matt Irwin. Irwin is going to uh, clear right-footed from about the 14-yard uh, mark. In fact, he comes out of his uh, area now. 20 yards from goal, clears into the right wing position, up goes Andy White, but he's let the ball bounce there, and that's a little bit of an error. Teague's cross uh, comes in, but it's too much on it, it's going to be picked up comfortably by Sean Densmore. Densmore, ball intercepted by uh, Cottrell, who's had a good game uh, for the Magpies. Oh, well done, Jake Moulton. Max Harrop helps the ball on, but we've lost it. Here comes, uh, it's got a good little spell for uh, Chorley here, without them really creating an opportunity the, th the threat is there but so far we've defended yeah we have we're fun functioning well in all departments i'd say brian but yeah i think Julia just done a little bit of a spell at the moment without actually creating anything clear cut but just as a reminder we're up against one of the title favorites so still work to be done that's a, a good interception by james jones the ball was threaded through to carver carver would have been on his way uh, there at the expense of the corner big goal coming in from the Northeast up in Durham, it's Spennymoor Town 1, Brackley nil. so Spennymoor have been in such wretched uh, form of uh, late lead by goal to nil. their manager Jason Ainsley said their 3-0 defeat at uh, Ashton United was one of the worst performances he had ever seen. Corner to Chorley, uh, down to our right, in it uh, comes free header. Referee's uh, seen something he didn't like. Difficult to see what was going on there, but referee didn't like some. No, I'm not sure what, but I'm glad he did because that was a, a free uh, header for, uh, was it, I think, Josh Wilson, um, which was saved okay by Tony Thompson, but you never feel comfortable when you see a player in your, in your area coming to connect with a corner, We're unchallenged as that was the case, but clearly there's an infringement somewhere along the line. Free kick. Goal, yeah, free kick to uh, the Robins. Tony Thompson's going to take it. Central position inside the area towards the Cisse. Up goes Teague. And Cisse does enough. Heads the ball on to Hume. Here comes uh, Alex uh, Newby. So Chorley can certainly play uh, in the middle of the park. Newby plays it back to Steve Jordan, who's playing in the uh, centre of a back three for the Magpies. And that's an interesting ball. Uh, Teague keeps it in, he's done well, but uh have picked the ball up and are on the offensive again, Andy White. He's uh, carried out of it, good strong defending by Scott Leather, almost, uh, almost breaking the law, but not quite. And uh, it's, uh, fortunately for the Robins, uh, Chorley have uh, lost it. And, you know, Scott Leather, he's, he's one of those defenders, I think most Altrigan fans would, would like to see him back here at some Absolutely no question. Everybody very sorry to see him go in the first place. Just remind us like that, that you get every time you see him, that he's a very, very capable, strong, but also very capable uh, uh, defender. But um, I think Jordan Hume was just indicating there uh, to Andy White, he wouldn't have minded, minded a pass. Uh, very, very unhappy uh, with, with uh, Andy White's choice to keep running with the ball and then losing it. He's absolutely right, is Jordan, because Andy White uh, just dallied too long on the ball and eventually it was taken uh, from him. So we've just got... Three minutes of added time, so uh, ball's played in. Uh, Hannigan slipped. Uh, Wilson plays it back to Alex Newby. Chance here 
And Yubi's got it all wrong. The Ulti fans uh, love that. It goes out uh, wide. So three added minutes uh, here. Uh, Altrigan one. Surely nil. And uh, surely in the in the second part of the first half have, have probably had more of the uh, the territory, but haven't really created it. No, they're sort of creeping their way back into it, really, Brad, aren't they? They're certainly not laying siege to our goal. Far, far from it, but they are just showing bits of, of a sign of, of, of having a, a greater input and uh, getting a, basically a foothold in the game and launching something that they can, they can perhaps uh, build on. There's no doubt about it. We are still really are still in for a, a, tough, after a tough game. Goal kick uh, eventually falls to uh, Sean Williams. Nice play by Williams. He's looking for Johnston, but finds Harrop. Harrop out to Johnston. This is a good play by Altrincham. Here's uh, Johnston. So cross is a good cross. Oh, Cisse oh. in onto it, but couldn't quite. Uh, it was a really good opportunity. Side footed effort volley. It was a difficult skill, but uh, got it wrong really. The uh, on loan man from uh, Blackpool, but great cross by John Johnson. A fine uh, move by the Robins. Here come uh, Troll again, but they've lost it. But so has uh, Sean Williams there, picked up by Wilson. Wilson turns, lays it uh, back to uh, Jordan. Steve Jordan, heart of the Chorley defence, finds Cottrell back to Jordan, to Mep and Walter. Not too much urgency from the Magpies here. Here's uh, Jordan. To Elliot Newby. Out to Blakeman. Blakeman right footed cross. Not the best, but it picks out Carver. Carver's twisting and turning. Plays it uh, back to Blakeman. Blakeman to Elliot Newby into Mepp and Walter. Walter Altringham have uh, picked up well there. Here's JJ. Ball's the uh, move has broken down and Johnston has won a throw in to relieve the pressure. We are just about a minute to go, I think, in added time. So into the third of the three minutes added of added uh, time by, given by the referee, Mr. Benjamin Speedy. Throw in to Altrincham over on the far side. Looking to go in with a one goal advantage at half time. Ball's headed on. There was a high foot there from someone, but John, uh, Jordan Hume is tussling for the balls. What a free kick. Referee's given Altrincham a free kick. And this probably should be just about the last action of uh, what's been a, a, a very interesting uh, first half. So. Uh, Johnston's going to take the free kick. It's uh, a good, probably over 40 yards from goal, right wing position. Densmore goes for him. And there goes the half time. It was an interesting piece of refereeing there from uh, Mr. Speedy. On Friday evening, we had a really uh, big meeting at Altrincham Football Club uh, when the board outlined their uh, short and long-term plans. There were a number of exciting uh, developments, and we're talking to directors Bill Waterson and John Coyne. First of all, uh, Bill, let's uh, come to you. Um, it was a big, big uh, meeting last night. Plenty of things uh, covered. Uh, Summarise, uh, first of all, the, the ground development plans uh, that you've got. Well, we wanted to set uh, a vision for where we were going with the ground. There's been, there's a lot of short-term things that we could do, but we wanted to make sure they fitted into a long-term view of where we want the club to go. Where we want the club to go is to be something that's in the heart of the community. The stadium is something that attracts people from the town and further afield. And we felt we had to set a long-term goal for what that might look like. And John, uh, can you sort of summarise the actual the ground plans because they're pretty ambitious and impressive? Well, I think they are ambitious and I think the, the point we tried to make yesterday was we've got to have a vision. If we don't have a vision, then there's nothing to aim for and I think a few questions from the floor suggested we were quite optimistic and where would the funding come from and I think we answered those as, as eloquently as we could but also I think... We've got to we've got to have something to aim for, and I think the the idea with the club is to get investment. Um, we mentioned last night we don't want a, a sugar daddy as such. We we'd like to have 
uh, individuals who buy into to what we're trying to do, buy into the mm-hmm. vision, yeah. um, who can add additional bandwidth and additional resource and capability and expertise. And if we can find those people and we can get them on board, then it'll all help towards um, to the vision itself and, and, and see if we can get this 10 year plan in, into, into motion. Now you're the latest uh, addition to the uh, board of directors and you've come in with specific responsibilities to develop the commercial uh, side of uh, the football club. So tell us about what you've been up to and, and your plans. Well, I think coming into the football club and I've been speaking to Bill and speaking to Lawrence and Graham for a few months prior to, to joining the board um, and, and you almost do your own diligence on the board itself and the football club and, and they certainly did that on me. Um, but the, but the objectives are quite simple. We've, we've got to get fresh blood into the football club in terms of sponsors and partners. Um, and if we can find those people, and, and we've had them today, we've had new match sponsors who've, who've never sponsored Altrincham before today. We've had a new match ball sponsor, never sponsored Altrincham before today. And if we can find those people and we can bring that fresh fresh money into the club, then that's clearly the, the, you know, the plan from the outset. We've got some great sponsors and we've got some great partners already. Um, I think we've been over reliant on them to some extent in the last f- uh, few years, um, and whilst we're you know f- we'll f- continually be grateful for for the support they give and we'll we'll continue to look after them and give them um, the exposure that they deserve. I think we've got to bring fresh blood into the into the club, and that's the idea. We've got to find investment. We've got to find sensible investment. We've got to be sustainable as a football club. We've got to provide a good experience, um, and and that's exactly what we're trying to do. And that's my objective, really. It's it's to find that, and it's to it's to make sure we just move on as a football club, bit by bit, bit by bit. And you've come into the football club quite recently. Uh, what's your perspective uh, on Altrincham as uh, where it is at the moment and what it could be? Well, it's interesting because my first involvement was as a match sponsor. So in the last couple of years, um, we we came in as as a family and, and as a business, and we sponsored the football club, match ball sponsor, main match sponsor. And we got to see the how the club operates. Um, it's a, I mean, always been aware of Altrincham as a, as an ex-player, and played in the non-league, played professionally, and played in the non-league. I've um, I've always been aware of Altrincham, played against them a number of times. You can see from today, you know, Manchester City, Man- Manchester United, both playing tomorrow. The crowd, it, you know, it's good, but we've got to get those numbers up. But it's a club that has got a lot of ambition and it's a club that's got a lot of potential and that's the key, we've got to tap into that potential. The the, the town centre is thriving, um, the, you know, the disposable income in the, in the town centre is thriving. We've got to tap into that, we've got to make it a good match day experience, we've got to make it a place that families want to come to, we've got to get the demographic far and wide, we can't just rely on the crowd that, that that's come over the last two, three, four years, we've got to introduce new blood and new new crowds. And Bill, coming back to you, another exciting development that's happening. Uh, it's not a, a, a long-term uh, view like the ground, but the introduction of the, the academy. Yeah, this to me is a very seriously positive for development for the club. It's taken us a long time to get this in place. Lawrence Looney's done a lot of work to ensure that we've got this. It will create the player pathway that we talked about in the past, but not yet managed to deliver upon. We will give a, a proper... Um, role for those players who want to come through an education system that brings them through the first team and in uh, through the youth team and into the first team uh, and we think that this will potentially make a significant difference for us. If you think about it in the long term you only need to have one success from an academy player to pay for the whole academy scheme for, for many many years. Uh, and we need to find a way to develop those young players who can come and um, perform on a higher stage for us. And now that we've got something in place around that, it will help us, I think, with our move to uh, full-time status, which, just to reiterate, is still many years away. But at least we have to think about how we're going to get there, and the academy is going to be a very important building block for that. And Lawrence was talking at the meeting uh, about uh, attracting potential investors and it, it's really important that we've got something to attract them with and with all the stuff that we had on the agenda at the meeting there's, there's going to be plenty for uh, people who want to invest in Altrincham Football Club going forward. I think so, I think you know we, we've, we've seen today with new people coming in to sponsor the club what's happening on the pitch and, and unfortunately we, we are somewhat restricted by what happens on the pitch you know you, you get results and there's there's more of a buzz around the club 
Um, last year and the year before, Phil's done a tremendous job, and I think that that drives sponsorship, that drives investment. When you know you've got a club, and and you know I don't want to single Bradford out today. We've we've played Bradford and we've beat them, but I know they've had their struggles get, getting investment into the club, and it tends to be one person who who keeps them running. And we, we, we want to go the opposite way to that. We want to get people and we want to get individuals who can come in and see what we're doing and, and come along for that journey. And it is a journey. And as Bill says, it's nothing that we're going to be able to achieve overnight. We've got to we've got to be organic. We've got to be sustainable. We, we've got to do it bit by bit. We've got to do it the right way. And we, we you know I think you said last night, Bill, we're not going to sell the club down the down the river. It's it's something that we have to do that that looks after the long term ambitions of the football club. And one of the things that was stressed was the that you'd very much like uh, a new supporters association, which we haven't had at Altrincham Football Club for a number of years. Yes, that's right. It's very important the fans have a voice in the development of the club. There's a lot going on, and there's a lot that we're going to be launching over the next couple of months and so on. You've seen the plans for the ground and the plans for the academy and so on. We absolutely want the fans to help shape how that looks. It's not about us imposing something or us coming up with an idea in a vacuum. If it doesn't uh, resonate with the supporters, if it doesn't give our fans what they want, then we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't waste time on doing it. The only way we can uh, get a consistent voice from the fans is through a supporters association and having that um, that clear channel of communication from the 1,266 who are here today, from the 800 or 900 people who come sometimes, to help us define what it is that's most important for us. This is why we need a supporters association, because we want to make sure that we're building a new home at the ground and a new uh, way of working in terms of how we how we live within the community and we need that to be defined in part by our supporters who are really making a difference to how, how quickly we progress. And as you mentioned John, uh, it's what happens out on the pitch has a big impact and in terms of the future of what happens out on the pitch, things are going well for the football club at the moment. We're on the back of a couple of uh, good years since Phil Parkinson and Neil Sorvel joined Altrincham uh, Football Club in 2017. But of course the, the Potentially, the long-term ambition is full-time uh, football, which is a big ask for a, a football club of this size, but at least we seem to have a plan now. We do have a plan, and we recognise that there's a, there's a surplus in terms of funding for that, and that has to be bridged. We, you know, we, we, we're not going to get there overnight. We don't think that we can just transition into football, uh, full-time football anytime soon. That you know, We need to make sure the revenues are in place. We need to make sure that we're doing the right things by... You know the history and the the future of this football club, um, but absolutely we you know we, we we want to go down that path and we have to we have to keep moving forward. We have to attract the right players. We have to we have to match Phil's ambition and, and Phil mentioned it last night a couple of times. You know he, he is ultra ambitious and we we want him to stay part of this football club and to do that we have to we have to match his ambition and. We know where that needs to head, and as a board, we've got that responsibility. But mm -hmm. we, we have to make sure that we realise that that ambition, and we we have to do it sustainable. That's the thoughts of uh, John Coyne and uh, Bill Watson uh, summarising the events of uh, Friday night, where there was a very positive and exciting agenda, looking at the future of Altrincham Football Club going forward in the next ten years. So we are just about ready to get things back underway here for this second half. Ulti one, surely nil. Referee just checking uh, the players are back on the pitch and uh, checking both goalkeepers and both linesmen, of course, on either side. Checks his watch and we'll be underway. The whistle goes. So surely kick us off, kicking from right to left towards the away end. And uh, it's uh, Nep and Walter who plays a long ball out wide to the right hand side. It's cut out by Jake Malt. Here's Densmore. It's a first time clearance looking for the ball over the top towards Jordan Hume. Surely cut out the danger and it's back in the Chorley defence. It's Scott Leather down the right hand side up towards Josh Wilson. Headed away by Hannigan though. Running as far as Teague. Down towards Elliot's newbie, the number 11 in the, in the green boots. Back to Scott Leather wearing the orange boots. Now he tries to find Josh Wilson. Wilson up front holds the ball up. Plays out wide to Teague. Can Teague get the ball in? And plays it to Newby. Back to Teague. 
right foot across towards the back post towards Carver. Oh, it's just headed away by James Jones, a really important defensive header there because Marcus Carver was waiting to knock it in. Good start by Shirley in the second half. Here's Methan Walter, left foot across, headed away by Hannigan. Here's Johnson, oh, brings the ball Jay. down, good first touch by Johnson, goes past Meppin Walter. Should, uh, should have passed that then, I think, but he's uh, just kept hold of possession. Here's Johnson inside, he runs into a dead end though, and surely win back possession. Here's Adam Blakeman on the left hand side. Early cross in towards, uh, I think it was Newby, and uh, I think Tom Hannigan slips there, and he gives away a free kick in a very dangerous position there, it's about 20 yards out or so, but. Um, like Sean Densmore on Tuesday night, it was Tom Hannigan who slips here and uh, gives away a very dangerous free kick. Yeah, absolutely. Most unfortunately, just lost his footing completely. I mean, it's a clear foul, but nothing you could do with it. So I'm glad the referee didn't feel the need even even to have a word with with Tom Hannigan. It was it was just a clear uh, slip, but it was unfortunately, but unfortunate timing and an unfortunate place to do it because this is a really dangerous position uh, for Chorley. A couple of players uh, over the ball, uh, uh, Alex Newby and. Um, and the number three Blakeman, so uh, let's see what happens. But it's, a, it's certainly a dangerous uh, position for a free kick to. Yeah, it's, you've got Alex Newby and Adam Blakeman over the ball there, so a left foot and a right footed option. Uh, I think it's a perfect chance for a right footed uh, shot by the looks of it. But you've got a four man wall there with Cissé and Moulton, Densmore and Jones. Blakeman takes, blocked by the wall to poor free kick in the end. Here's Newby though inside the box. Crossed into one of the supporter backs, take a Teague. Oh, it's an air shot by Scott Leffer and CC can bring the ball away. CC over towards Johnson. Oh, turn the counter attack here. It's Johnson on the left hand side. Tries to take on Teague. It cuts back though. Plays it across to Max Harrow. But the ball's a bit too strong. And he goes out of play for a goal kick to Chorley. But Johnson didn't have quite, didn't quite have the pace there to get away from the uh, Chorley players in the end. His pass over towards Max Harrow was not accurate. And he goes out of play for a goal kick. So a couple of early goals in the second half across the fixtures today. Telford on 3 0 up against Curtis Nashton. That third goal being scored by Andre Brown, the guy who scored the penalty in the last minute on Tuesday night against Altrincham. And also a goal for Chester, they've equalised at home against York City. And that goal has been scored by, it's actually an own goal by Sean Newton, the York City player. So that's 1 0 at the Diva. So I will keep you updated, as course, of course, throughout the second half as to the, the goals that do go in. As it stands, it's still Stockport nil, Blythe Spartans one. So Tony Thompson kicks the ball on. Harrop flicks it on, appeals for a free kick and he gets it. So it's a good free kick here. Uh, Harrop flicked the ball on and uh, as he was doing so, he was uh, pushed in the back by the looks of things. And uh, it's a free kick about 25 yards out, just to the edge of the area. But a good chance um, to get the ball into the box. Not quite inside enough to shoot, I don't think. But um, certainly one of those... Uh, Opportunity to get the ball across the six yard box, that's for sure. So, uh, you've got a couple of options there. You've got uh, John Johnson's going to take it by the looks of it, yeah. Cissé and Maltz leave him to it. So, it will be Johnson is going to take it in swing and free kick just in front of the community sports. So, all shooting towards the uh, goal throw end in the second half. So, Johnson's going to take this. Referee blows his whistle. Johnson takes towards the back post. And it's Joe Hannigan! It's Joe Hannigan! What a fantastic hand raise! He got in front of his gun. What a free kick by John Johnson. He put it right in the spot for Tom Hannigan. And that's got convincing header. 2-0 to Altrigan. Just about the last thing you'd expect from a, a defence so it's renowned as Chorley's to let Tom Hannigan escape the clutches of his marker like that, but he did. Perfectly flighted free kick from John Johnson, great delivery, and Tom was there and he wasn't going to miss out. Planted a header into the roof of the net from a central position, about eight yards out, 2 0, just the start we needed in the second half. Yeah, it's put on a plate by John Johnson, really good free kick. Uh, Tom Hannigan beat off his man quite comfortably there, actually, and it's just planted down the middle of the goal, really, past the keeper. Uh, into the top of the net and um, fully deserved I think Ulstrom 2, surely nil so just after uh, the half time whistle of course just after the um, the resumption of the second half of course and there has been quite a few goals across the league already in this second half now here's Mepp and Walter surely looking to hit back straight away here's Scott Leverd on the right hand side tries to find Elliot Newby here's Teague and that's a, that's a free kick on the far side and just in front of the smart Stillridge family stand I must say, Teague's not been convinced on that far side at all today. You know, he's, uh, he's renowned for being a very good, very good team player, a good leader in this Chorley side, but 
as Brian alluded to in the first half, he is playing out of position this afternoon and it's not been convincing for me in this, in this game so far. So, it's going to be a left forward free kick towards the back post for Chorley. One in the air, 2 1. 2 1. And as I was saying, that is, uh, I think it's Teague who's got the goal. It was, it's the captain Andy Teague who's got his head on that. And uh, it's going to be, we've got a goal back, and that's uh, live in those Chorley fans up. It is Oldstrom 2, Chorley 1, John. Yeah, he's made an impact now, to be fair. It was a good delivery, I think, Blakeman on the left there with his left foot curling it deep to the far post, and that's a case of who was. We know what they're about at these set pieces, surely. They've got height, they've got strength, and nobody was stopping to there. He won that clean as you like, and uh, no chance for Thompson. Down to low to his right-hand side, 2-1, game back on. Absolutely game on. Here's Sean Densmore, down the right-hand side, inside towards Harrop. Bit of space, Harrop for turn. Can he get a shot away? Try, can't quite beat his man, trying to take the man on rather than shooting. Here's Densmore. Maltz. Foul, that's a foul on Jake Maltz by uh, Marcus Carver. And, uh, it's going to be a free kick inside the Chile half page of him. The referee's got a quick word with Marcus, Car Marcus Carver there. So this is very much game on, as John was saying there. It's all to play for now. It should be a very entertaining last half an hour or so here at the Jay Davidson Stadium. And, uh, as Chorley pulled that goal back, it does still remain 1-0 to Blythe for Ashley Park. So very intriguing for the rest of this game, that's for sure. So it's uh, John Johnson's going to take this towards the back stick. Headed on by Hume! Oh, it's just wide! Oh, really good chance there. And once again, a great ball by John Johnson right on right on the plate for Jordan Hume, but he was stretching a little bit there, Jordan Hume. Yeah, it was a great delivery. You know, I'm not, I'm not so sure he had, so, you know what, Jim? He had Tom Hannigan and James Jones coming in behind him. I think Tom Hannigan might have been the best place from the point of view of being able to get it right off the meat of the forehead. But Jordan wasn't to know that. They were behind him and uh, he stretched for it and unfortunately couldn't quite control the uh, direction and just wide. Well, thanks, John. Here's uh, John Johnson. Bit of space here. He's got Densmore support. It's cut out, though. Back towards Sean Williams. Williams out wide to Densmore. Bit of space on the right-hand side. Cut put inside towards Johnson Johnson takes on his mind it's inside towards Jordan Hume I think Jordan's going to get there it's just in front of him and that will be a free kick for a foul on uh, Jordan uh, by Jordan Hume so the ball will go out of play for a goal kick but it's been a, a lightning start to the second half very much like the start of the first half and uh, both both fans are in good spirits they've uh, ulti of course trying to hold on to this lead and surely they're chasing it so it should be a fascinating game so it's Matu who's really going to take the goal kick, or the free kick, I should say, for Chorley. Kicks it long towards Wilson. Williams battles against Wilson. It falls out wide towards Teague now. Teague on the right-hand side, up towards Newby. Back to Lever. Bringing the ball forward inside the ulti half. Newby out wide towards Teague. Looking for an early cross there. Cuts back inside towards Alex Newby inside midfield. It's a good tackle by Ulti by Williams, oh that's going to be a foul, no, yeah the referee gives a free kick, it was uh, Max Harrop just got in front of his man there, got the ball first and uh, as he did so he's clipped, the Chorley players are uh, protesting their innocence but I think that was a foul and uh, we see the look to uh, you know, control the game, it's going to be a chance for him to build from the back here, it's um, a foul just as, you know, across the back four and Tony Thompson's going to come out, come out of his goal to take this for the Robins. 10 minutes gone in the second half. It was Tom Hannigan who put up the Robins 2 0 up, and only a minute or two later, the captain for Chorley, Teague, pulled one back for Chorley. So it's going to be a goal kick uh, for Chorley. This it was a kick by Tony Thompson straight down the left hand side. Uh, Jordan Hugh couldn't quite get on the end of it and go straight out of play for a goal kick. So Matt Irwin. Tells his players to get up the pitch. It's going to be taken long. He takes it down the right hand side. Wilson in the air flicks on towards Newby. Newby can't quite get there. Ahead of Hannigan. Hannigan plays it long. Looking for was Jordan Hume. Jordan Hume holds off his man really well. Appeals for a free kick by Harrop. Nothing's given. Here's Blakeman for Chorley. Williams goes down. He's back on his feet now though. Chorley on the break. It's Teague trying to release Newby on the right hand side. Goes out play for a throw in. Taken quickly towards Alex Newby. Up against Hannigan. Hannigan puts it out, play for a throw in just on the far side in front of the smart storage to fam family stand. And it's a chance for Chorley to get players forward and get players into the box. 
Teague takes it short towards Scott Lever. Inside towards Newby, back to Lever. Inside the box, crossed in towards Carver, headed away. Not convincingly though, here's Mepp and Walter. Crossed in again towards the back, si back stick. Won by Teague across the six yard box, headed by Carver. And it's headed well over the bar in the end, but um, John, they are growing into this game, they are creating chances now. Yeah, Carver couldn't get over that head headed over the bar, but no, good spell of pressure from Shawley just shows what they're about. Um, and that goal clearly has given them a bit of self belief and uh, they've stepped things up a little bit and we've really got to re establish uh, the control of the game, which we had earlier. Yeah, thanks, John. It's going to be um, a goal kick by Tony Thompson, which has taken long. Appeals for a foul there, nothing's given. Oh, there will be a foul now actually for a, for a foul by Jordan Hume on the uh, Chorley centre back. And you, can, you can actually see Jordan Hume getting angry and angry during this, during this game. He's had a couple of decisions go against him now in terms of small fouls. There's nothing major, but that's all it takes Jordan Hume sometimes to get him riled up. <coughs> so the referee's having a quick chat with uh, Jake Malt here. What do you see there, John? Yeah, somebody spoke now a turn. I think it might be Max Harris. So yeah, Jordan Hume possibly is in the vicinity, but he's clearly having a word with Jake as captain to say, uh, I'm not going to stand for any, any dissent, so you better have a word. Um, I think it was Max Harris actually was unhappy with something. I can only imagine that's what it's about anyway. So it's going to be a free kick inside the Chorley half to be taken by the keeper, Irwin. The referee blows his whistle. And he's taken up the pitch. In the air, won comfortably by Andy White. He will, of, he will of course, miss the Tuesday night fixture against Brackley Town for that red card against Telford. Here's uh, Elliot Newby, forced back to Scott Lever, inside towards Jake Cottrell. It is in the centre of the park, shot by Cottrell, dragged it wide. It's one of those little P rolls that um, he thought for a second might have troubled Tony Thompson, but in the end, it goes um, comfortably wide from Ulti's point of view. And it will be goal kick so just a reminder once again of this season's main country sponsor Ashley Mowers they won't just sell you any old mower they will keep they will help you find one that's best for you they have a range of quality garden machinery and tools from leading manufacturers pay them a visit at Castle Mill Lane in Ashley uh, their website ashleymowers.com so here's Nepp and Walters cut out well by Densmore here's Harrop turns as well turns his man really well there cuts back inside and here's Mont good play by Alti good intricate play by Williams there but as I say that, it gives it away. Now here's Nepp and Walter for Chorley, bring the ball out. And that will be a free kick for a foul by Williams on Nepp and Walter. He's quite a big unit, of the Chorley centre-back, and uh, he went down quite easily there after a foul by Williams. And it will be a free kick for Chorley. <coughs> and it's going to be Blakeman, the left wing-back, who's going to take this just inside the centre circle. Takes it towards the back stick. Teague's there, challenging. Just about beaten to it by the ultimate defender. Here's Cece, who can bring it away. On the left-hand side, good play by Cece. Beats his man. Really good play there. In the end, it's cut out by Chorley, but he just drags his team at the pitch there, doesn't he, John? Yeah, great pace by Cece. Really great pace. And perseverance as well to get past Jake off two challenges. Eventually, the tackle came in from Jake Cottrell, uh, but it's an ulti throw and really good. Great way to relieve the pressure that. Just get... Uh, steaming away down the flank and uh, and reminding the Chorley defence that he's, uh, he's around and he takes a bit of looking after. As Brian was saying at our time on Eton, do tend to concede a lot of goals in the 60th minute, or that sort of area of the game anyway, and that's been the case here. They are 1-0 down now to Bradford Park Avenue. So Bradford Park Avenue scoring a 58th minute and are beating Nuneaton by one goal to nil. 60 minutes gone in this game. Holtzcombe 2, Chorley 1. It's all to play for. There is a temporary pause in this game. Um, not sure why, to be honest. I think there's going to be a substitution here. Yeah, it's, um, it's going to be the number two, Steve Jordan, who's coming off. To be replaced by the number 15, Dale Winton. So that will be an attacking change, you would have thought, John, the number two coming off. I know Winton's a bit of an attacking midfielder. Absolutely, an attacking move. I think we'll probably may well be switching back to a, a back four uh, from the three centre backs. One of those three centre backs having gone off, Stephen Jordan and um, Uncle's Witten, who, who is an attack minded player. So, yeah, clearly they're going to go for it. Yeah, it looks like Teague, the right wing back, was slotting at right back with Scott Lever and Mepp and Walter at centre backs with uh, the left back 
or left wing back throughout this game. Blakeman filling in at left back now. Um, so the, the game is back underway. Here's Tom Hannigan, pressured by Chorley. They are certainly trying to um, pressure all team possession a lot more in the second half. And it's going to be a throw in to Altrincham just in front of the dugouts to be taken by Andy White. He's looking for an option, takes it down the line. To see safe, flicked on towards Hume. Chorley cleared the ball away. Hannigan beats the Chorley players to it. And it's going to be a foul, a push in the back on Harrop there. He's had a good game, I think, Harrop. Um, he's been up against some physical players, but he's, uh, he's held the ball up pretty well and uh, been his tricky self as usual. Taken into the feet of Jordan Hume. And here's Johnson, can he get a shot away? Oh, it's a bit, a bit of a poor touch by Johnson there. He was in there. Here's Densmore, well, ignores Densmore's call inside towards Jordan Hume. Can we get a cross in, it's a low cross, cut out by Chorley. Densmore's in there, the danger's not cleared. It's Hume. Ball's up in the air, and Chorley will clear the ball now. It's uh, cleared away. Only, only as far as James Jones. Up against Wilson, and that will be a throw in just in front of us. Taken quickly by Chorley. Inside towards Alex Newby. Malt cuts it out. Back to Blakeman. Blakeman cut, clears it long. Only as far as Tom Hannigan in the ulti back four. Chorley trying to up the tempo here. Here's Cissé. Back to White. White clears it long down the left hand side towards uh, Scott Leather, being pressured well by Cissé, really good play there by Cissé, he keeps the ball in play near the corner flag, can he get inside the box, really good play by Cissé, shot, oh it's blocked well by Meppen Volta, Max Harry wanted the ball, pushing back, but um, really good pressuring by uh, Yusuf Cissé, kept the ball in near the corner flag, drove into the box and it's a good block of in by Meppen Volta John. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're not at an angle to be sure here, but you look for, like, look for all the world as if it might have been heading for the top corner. What great persistence. So, 74 by Cissé to chase what was a lost cause, and the big ricochet spun in near the corner, Frank stayed in, and, the, and it cut in. Great play by Cissé, and they're looking also scored there. Yeah, very unlucky. Deserved the goal, that's for sure. He's been exceptional once again today, Cissé, down the left-hand side, and it will be a corner kick for all team taken towards the back stick but it's quite comfortable for the keeper in the end he claims that very comfortably so it had, there has been a goal in Chester they have gone 2-1 down to York so it's Chester 1 York 2 here's Chorley on, on the counter attack Adam Blakeman and that's a foul on Blakeman by John Johnson and that will be a booking for the number 7 I imagine I imagine it's going to be a booking anyway I don't think he's getting it well no it's, it's been let off there John very lucky I think very lucky um, yeah, no yellow cards given there, but he's, he's cut out some danger. Yeah, I mean, one school of thought might, might say, well, it's a chance from behind, it could well have been a, a, a booking, but another one would say, well, there's so little in it, there's hardly any contact whatsoever. So I think the referee's got it right not to not to get a card out, just settle for the free kick, but a dangerous position we need to defend. So it's taken towards the bat stick. James Jones gets there just in front of Andy Teague, who's trying to get the away fans going there, the captain. And it will be a corner kick. He was headed out of play by James Jones. It's such a vital interception because Teague was waiting to knock it in. But it will be a corner. It's going to be Adam Blakeman on the far side in front of the Chorley fans in swinging towards the near post. Not the best corner, cleared away by Densmore, but not the best clearance. That will get another chance here to get the ball into the box. Another corner kick. And the ball's gone out of play. Um, the ball's gone out of the ground, so they will need to get a new ball. It's taken short this time towards Newby. Up against Cissé. Inside the box, crossed in, deflects off the ulti player and John Johnson clears but no one's up front. Here comes Shirley again. Shirley really starting to turn the screw here. Jones wins the header against Mepp and Walter on his far. And it will be a throw in to Shirley. Mepp and Walter will take towards Whitson. Back to Mepp and Walter. Play back across to Blakeman. Up against Harrop. Inside the box towards Wilson. He turns his man pretty well, he's, he's forced back though, towards Mepp and Walter, crossed in, and there's a vital header once again by Tom Hannigan. And these are vital moments in the second half, can LT keep Chorley out? They are putting the pressure on. 20 minutes gone, LT 2, Chorley 1. This time it's a corner on the opposite side, it's going to be a right foot in swinger. Towards the back post, oh he's just missed the header. Not cleared yet, driven back across the face of goal. And here's Johnson the counter attack. Oh, to bring the ball away. He's got Cissé in support. Here's Harrop as well. Johnson up against his men. Can he play it through to Cissé? Johnson goes it alone. Will he get a shot away? He's 
Johnston, oh, it's going to be a corner kick. Appeals to handball, nothing's given. Could Johnston have passed that ball there, Johnny? He took it himself, but it's won a corner kick, but it could have been so much more. I think for a minute, for a moment, he thought Cissé might have strayed upside, so it didn't pass to him. Then I think he had a chance of a shot, and I think Cissé was in his in his way, so he left it just that second longer. Don't blame him for that. And then it's blocked and uh, corner. Great, really quick break, though. Great attack. It's a great game to watch. It's a great game to commentate on. It's been really good watching, and uh, some really good football by both sides. So it's going to be a corner kick here for the Robins, just not on near side. And it's going to be Johnson, I think, to take. Yeah towards the back stick, headed away by Mepp and Walter, just glanced it away, and it will be a throw-in on the opposite side, just in front of the community sports hall, but it's all going on here, it's a great game, and there will be the referee just, uh, yeah, the referee just guarding against uh, time wasting there, I think. Uh, Andy White's in no rush to get up towards, get up the pitch to take the throw for Alty, but, um, yeah, Alty won't mind slowing this game down a little bit because it has been very fast tempoed in, in the second half so far. It's thrown towards Cissé near the corner flag. Cissé turns his man really well. Harrop can't quite control it. Great tackle there. Here's just Jordan Hume. Back to White. Now Malt. Here's Jordan Hume again. Chance here, surely. He's always on side as well. Oh, that was a great chance. He just strayed away from Jordan Hume there. He couldn't get the ball under control. If he had got it under control, it would have been a goal, surely. Here comes Shirley, though. Mepin Walter takes it over the halfway line. He's forced back against Johnston. Oh, here's Blakeman. Blakeman trying to work out what's to do here. Up towards Josh Wilson. He turns, bit of space here. Out wide towards Marcus Carver. Back to Mepin Walter. Mepin Walter tries to play over the top towards Carver. Really good tackle there by James Jones. Really good tackle, convincing. I think Marcus Carver was looking for a penalty there, but uh, it's a fantastic tackle by Jones. And it will be a corner kick, though, uh, for Chorley once again. And it's going to be, can't quite, I think it's Luby on the, on the near side there to take towards the back post. Won by Teague. Only as far as uh, Cissé who clears. Now oh, it's in the Chorley back line. They put it back into the mixer towards Teague. Won by Hannigan. Not convincing yet, Carver. It's Teague here. It's onside. Shoot two. It's Teague. It's that man again. The captain for Troy is two all. And I must say, it's a bit of a scrappy piece of play, but it's a great finish there by the captain. Well, I'm not quite sure how that broke to Teague. It must have been a slice of luck. I know Tom Hannigan didn't quite get his head uh, as he wanted it to. And it's up in the air on the edge of our area. Suddenly, it looked like an, an, an attempt to clear his hand of somebody fell perfectly for Teague and you have to say he couldn't have caught that volley any better it's a tight angle but he abso it absolutely screamed into the roof of the net yeah, it's a really good goal and it's been coming I must say so Densmore on the right hand side for Ulti, brings the ball forward trying to find Max Harrop down the right hand side and uh, Jake Cottrell wins the ball Nepp and Walter clears it towards Josh Wilson and he's going to Here's Controlli again, it's Marcus Carver. They're winning all the second balls at the moment. It's on the far side, Newby back to Teague. Now inside to Witten, back to Teague. And that's put the Chorley fans in great voice now. They know that a point is massive here with Chorley losing 1 0 to Blythe. Well, here's Harrop, turns his man really well. Here's Max Harrop. Oh, it's a really poor pass though in the end. Really poor. John Johnson is an acres of space, but here's Andy White. Or towards Cissé, tries to let it run, but in the end it goes out of play for a throw to Chorley. So 25 minutes gone in the second half. The score is Ultram 2, Chorley Town 2. I'll hand over, hand over to John for a quick word, and then over to Brian for the rest of the second half. Yeah, it's some game is this, it really is. I mean, it's, it, they dredge something up from somewhere, Chorley, don't they, Brian? In the back and level terms, and real knife edges last uh, 20 minutes or so. Yeah, they've responded well to going two goals down. You've got to admire the strike from Teague. It was a wonderful, wonderful uh, volley. He scored last week. He scored Chorley's last three goals, and he's a central defender. I know he's playing right wing back today, but uh, a fantastic strike last week and another fantastic strike again. Here's Cissé. That looked like it could have been a penalty. Here's Harrop, left foot, blocked by Mepp and Walter, but certainly uh, claims for a penalty there as Cissé tumbled in the box here's Josh Wilson picked up by Jake Malt Malt good ball to Sean Williams Williams 
driving forward, knocks it wide to Densmore, Densmore inside to Hume, Hume to Densmore, chance! Over the years, he hasn't lost the knack. Great play by Jordan Hume. When he played the ball into Jordan Hume, he thought Jordan's going to twist and turn, get a shot away. Not a bit of it. He saw the old war horse galloping up along the right hand side of him, slipped it into him, and a really, really super cool finish. That's magnificent play between uh, Sean Densmore and uh, Jordan Hume, and it was well constructed. I think it was Jake Malta who originally picked it up, but Sean Williams involved. But uh, it was. Hume and Densmore who did the main work and created the goal and surely have looked quite vulnerable we've been able to play in and around them inside the area well we have and when you think of Tom Hannigan's goal being from a free header absolutely unheard of for Chorley's defence but that was the case for that goal and we have caused some real problems with toyed with them pulled pull them round here there and everywhere particularly Jordan Hume and they're struggling to cope Chester 2 uh, York City 2 now at the Divas Stadium here it's Altrincham 3 Chorley 2. It's been a fantastic game of football and a really uh, enthralling second uh, half. But fair play to uh, Sean Densmore. Took his chance really well, sliding the ball sort of underneath and past Matt uh, Irwin. It was a very cool finish. Yes, he was. He had the keeper to beat. He was through, but there's a bit of an angle because he was, he was on the right-hand side of the six-yard box, so he still had plenty to do, but with a real aplomb, he'd have thought it was the other way around that he laid it on, for, and that was Jordan Hume finishing because that was a finish of a, of a proven marksman, even though he's a, by trade a right-back. It was a real cool head, and, uh, especially with so much riding on it as well. He had time to think, took it really well. Great finish. So the Altrium right-back uh, puts Altrium ahead by three goals to two is the... The Chorley uh, num number uh, four, Teague, is playing right wing back. He's scored both Chorley goals, so interesting uh, set of scorers today. Here's Andy White. White into Williams. Williams, good ball. Densmore, the scorer. He's got, he's got space to go forward. Can he have a go? He can. It's a really good effort. Oh, it was on his way. Oh, he's going over the box. What a goal that would have been. He's got the taste for it now, you can tell, he thinks if Teague can score two goals, so can I. He didn't have another thought in his mind, other than I'm getting near the edge of the area, I'm taking a few paces, I'm going to wallop this, you can see him winding himself up for it, and didn't he, didn't he hit it well, it's probably about a couple of feet over the bar, that was all, but it was a really cracking effort by Sean Densmore. Yeah, certainly, uh, Irwin was fly a pretty impressive dive by the Chorley goalkeeper, so... I think uh, we've not seen the end of uh, events in this game yet. 29 minutes gone, Altrincham three, Chorley two. Elliot Newby can't keep them all in. Altrincham have a throw in our match commentary sponsor today. Yeah, Kids Disco Parties, the number one children's entertainment provider in the Northwest, catering for private birthday parties for children aged four to 11 years old. Uh, for more information, visit their website at kidsdiscoparties.co.uk. Here's uh, Max Harrop, wins a free kick. And uh, Harrop has he started the game well, and he started the second half uh, well. And he's certainly been influential in this game. It's a free kick to Aldrin, bang on the halfway line. A good interception by Scott Leather, what a good defender he is. And uh, Leather comes away again, but here's Jordan Hume. Hume has the ball, plays it back to James Jones, Jones to Malt. Jake Malt finds uh, Max Harrop, back heel by Harrop, it's well read by uh, Cottrell, picked up by Meppen Walter, ball's played into Wilson, Wilson knocks the ball out to Blakeman, Blakeman, his ball's intercepted by the alternate goal scorer of the third goal, that divides the teams at the moment, uh, tries to thread it through, well intercepted by Meppen Walter, good ball out to uh, Alex Newby, Newby's got uh, Jones and Williams for company. Lays the ball across, chance here for Whitton. Good uh, piece of defensive play by uh, Yusifu Cisse there and also Max Howe, that's really good play. Harrop knocks the ball forward, bit of a hopeful one, but uh, Hume's chasing it, bit of a lost cause, but Hume chases it right down and Irwin throws the ball out under arm to Scott Leather. Leather advancing over towards the halfway line. 
gets a deflection, bit of unfortunate there. Here's Newby, Newby inside, ball comes back, picked up by Blakeman. Here's Meppen Walter, it's a great effort by Meppen Walter, and it's a weird save. It's a strange save by Tony Thompson. Eventually, he's done enough, the ball's bounced up in the air, it's bounced to Carver. Carver, from a tight angle, has blazed over. He'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, I think so. He's offside as it turns out, Brian. The flag's gone up, yeah, uh, uh, belatedly. Um, but yeah, a strange save. Did he absolutely wallop it? Was it um, uh, Mepp and Walter for shot? Uh, 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 did he misread it, Tony Thompson, or did it move in the air, one or the other? Because he was sort of diving to his right and suddenly he was in danger of going in over his left shoulder. But the main thing is he reacted well enough to get a hand on it and knock it up in the air. And as it turns out, Carver was offside trying to meet the rebound, so we got away with that. One of those shots that uh, could have bounced anywhere, could have actually bounced into the net. A couple of big goals elsewhere. Geisley won, Ashton United nil. That could pretty well condemn uh, Ashton to uh, not quite to relegation technically, but it'd be a big, big uh, blow to them. And it's now, is, uh, here comes uh, Alex Newby. It's a ground shot that's uh, going wide. A uh, big goal up in the northeast in Durham, uh, in uh, County Durham. It's uh, Spennymoor Town 2. Brackley Town won, so Spennymoor have regained the lead here. And of course, Brackley Town visit the J. Davidson Stadium on Tuesday. So it's a fascinating and really exciting uh, Saturday afternoon's uh, Vanarama National League North uh, football. Here is Altrincham 3, Chorley 2. Uh, Teague with a fine header there, balls played forward towards uh, Hume, but Mepp and Walter. Powerful uh, header towards uh, Elliot Newby. Newby still in possession, knocks the ball uh, back. Cissé challenging, ball's knocked uh, forward. It's probably going to go out and it looked like there was a nudge there, but the referee is, the, the assistant referee is given a corner, but uh, Tom Hannigan looked like he got a real heavy nudge. Well, he did. I think it went out off Tom Hannigan, but that was because he got a barge in the back, which was right in front of the linesman. Surely should have been a free kick. Corner kick to the Magpies. Right footed out swinger. Up go the heads. It's a real. Oh, it's a goal. It's another goal. And it's Meppen Walter. Uh, a fine, fine uh, header. There was an Altrincham player on the line. May have been uh, Sean Densmore or Sean Williams. But it's. And, and Tony Thompson's got a book in there. But it's gone in off the Altrincham defender into the roof of uh, the net. It really was a terrific. Well, whilst that's what they do from, from set pieces, we know that they're a threat. He's a massive unit, Mepin Walter. He wins these balls in the air. That's always liable to happen, but it makes it all the harder to set when you think that over on the far side there, for all the world, like Hannigan are being barged in the back for the um, corner. It should really have been an Altrincham free kick. Yeah, that does seem as if Altrincham have been hard done by there because it did look like a foul on Hannigan as it the ball then bounced off him because of his momentum from the barge. Balls uh, played forward by Sean Densmore to uh, John Johnson, picked up now by uh, Blakeman. Surely you need to go for all three points, as Altrincham do. So it's going to be a fascinating last uh, 12 minutes or so. That's a foul by uh, Jake Cottrell on Max Harrow. Max Harrow very unhappy uh, with that. Altrincham have a free kick right on the edge, right on the edge of the centre circle. Taken short by Jake Malt comes to uh, Densmore via Williams, Williams to Johnston, Johnston gets inside, <coughs> finds Williams, Williams good ball to Johnston, nice play by Johnston, ball's cleared, up towards uh, Carver, picked up by Williams, finds Densmore, Densmore back to Sean Williams, Sean Williams attacking the space, good ball to uh, Johnston, Johnston out to Densmore, Densmore inside to Johnston, Johnston puts the uh, cross in, Cleared by Mepp and Walter comes. Here's uh, Alex Newby. Anything could happen now in the next uh, 10 or 12 minutes or so. Balls played back by Wilson to uh, Blakeman. Blakeman, rather hopeful ball towards uh, Newby. Up goes uh, Andy White. Wins the header, but surely still in uh, possession. Here's uh, Teague. Wilson picked up uh, by Andy White, but he's almost uh, lost, lost it. The ball ricochets to Scott Leather. Leather to Witham, the substitute. Here's uh, Blakeman. Plays it back to Teague. Teague sweeps it out wide to Mepp and Walter. Who, uh, oh, and it's JJ's won the ball off Mepp and Walter, done well. 
Napa Walters uh, recovered. But, uh, Scott Leather's done well to really keep the ball in there. Looked like he lost control there, but plays the ball to Dale Witham. And here's uh, Teague, plays it out wide to Elliot Newby. This game really opening up now. Here's Newby. Cross, headed clear by Tom Hannigan. Powerful header, but uh, straight to a yellow shirt. Here's uh, Witham again, plays uh, the ball to Newby. Newby to uh, Alex Newby. Here's Elliot Newby, back to Teague. Teague dinks the ball forward. Cissé should get on to uh, that. Good play by uh, Yusifu Cissé. Can he get on his bike here? He's got the ball inside too. Jordan Hume, Jordan Hume, that's a dreadful challenge on him by Scott Leather. It's going to be booked and sent up here, I think. Is it Mepp and Walter? Oh, it's Mepp and Walter. Sorry, I thought it was Scott Leather. Mepp and Walter receives a yellow card. So Teague, Leather and Mepp and Walter. And that was a pretty cynical uh, challenge because Altrium had a man over and it would have been a great... Yeah, it's a really, really, really good attack with uh, Cissé again at the, the forefront of it with his pace and direct, direct style of running and a plate to Jordan Hume. It looks if like he might have had a shooting chance just before he, he jinked it past what, that, that or attempted to jink past that challenge that scythed him down. And it was, yeah, pretty cynical. And uh, if there's um, yeah, certainly a yellow card, if there's something between yellow and red, it might have been merited that because we were in such a good position. It's a free kick, uh, fairly central position, slightly to the left. It's about it's a good 25, 26 yards. And um, Altrin will make their first and second substitutions. James Poole and Simon Richmond are coming on. Sean Williams is uh, going off. And uh, also Max Harrop. So... Simon Richmond for Sean Williams, James Poole for Max Harrop. Poole immediately taking an interest in this free kick. Densmore's also over it. And uh, so it's 25, 26. It doesn't look like the, the uh, Chorley York wall is a full 10 yards. There you come. Is Poole going to take it? It looks like it's going to be Densmore. It's a great effort. Yeah! If he feels on it, he fancies himself. If not, it might go over the stand roof. We know which category that belongs in. The former, that was absolutely to perfection. Again, the goalkeeper, um, Irwin, absolutely flung himself. No chance of getting anywhere near it. Always put heading for the top corner, and it was. And what great scenes of jubilation over on the bench on the far side to celebrate the score. And it's a good four, Charlie three. Remarkable game of football. Sean Densmore, it was a dummy by uh, James Poole, but Densmore really got it right, lifted it over the wall, and it had too much uh, power on. He didn't smack it really hard, but too much power and placement for Matt Irwin. Quite similar to a goal he scored at Boston United a few uh, years ago, and he scored one or two like that over the years. So two goals for uh, Sean Densmore, the Altrium right back. Two goals for Andy Teague, the uh, Chorley skipper and right uh, wing back. So it really has been uh, a great afternoon for uh, the right sided fullbacks. And Altrium lead again. It's a seven goal thriller. And who's to say there won't be further goals? Ball's played forward. Up goes Hannigan. Header falls to uh, Elliot Newby. Here's uh, Louis Olman who's just come on, he's got an opportunity, takes the ball across, well held by Tony Thompson. You can't take your eyes off this. You can't, you're absolutely right, Brian, don't let's get run away with the idea that that's a match winner, it's all over for you. That's not the case at all, surely. Look, they're going to come back, throw everything at it, and they're so dangerous, particularly at set pieces. We've really got to be on our, on our guard, but let's hope it does stay like this, because what a great winning goal it would, should it count as that by Sean Densmore. Just had the attendance, it's a good one, 1,597, 1,597 is today's match uh, attendance. Good uh, turnout from Chorley, they must have brought uh, 300, 350 or so, probably with what's in the, in the stand. Here comes Aldrin's third substitution, it's uh, Max Chadwick who's going to replace uh, John Johnston, who's uh, had another fine game, but... Um, 
you know, I think that's a good substitution because I think Chadwick could cause them a few problems because the game's going to be certainly stretched in these last few minutes. Yes, it is. If you imagine he'll come on over here and look for the opportunity to cut in on his uh, left foot, which he favours, and uh, uh, yeah, that could be a tactic that could pay dividends as Chorley go for it and leave gaps at the back. We must try and exploit that. So, just a reminder, Altrincham 4, Chorley 3. Altrincham were 2 up early in the second half. Goals from uh, Jordan Hume after 9 minutes and uh, Tom Hannigan after 50. Teague pulled one back straight away to reduce the arrears, then made it 2-2 from a wonderful strike. Altrincham go ahead through a great goal from Sean Densmore. Courtney Mepper walter makes it 3-3 and Densmore's free kick makes it 4-3. Yusufu Cisse, he's doing a great job down there in the corner. Pulls it in, great play. That's a penalty! That's a penalty! Jordan Hughes pulled down! It's a blatant penalty! Altrincham have a chance to see on the, the points here! And uh, you won't see a more clear cut, but I think it's Scott Leather who looks like he could be in some uh, trouble. I think he's fallen very awkwardly, uh, and it doesn't look too good for the former Altrincham uh, central uh, defender. James Poole is uh, lining up to take this uh, penalty. Of course, uh, John Johnston is off the pitch, but you're not going to see a clearer cut penalty than that. Well, no, and how many times when that happens in the area does the referee bring a card out? And we know Scott's already been booked, so could he be for a second yellow here? Remains to be seen, but, you know, I, you would think normally a referee would show a yellow card for that, with it being a penalty in the penalty area. Jordan cuts inside, uh, he was on for a clear goal-scoring opportunity. Not that it was a cynical challenge, a straight red or anything like that, but you, you would expect a second yellow card to come out. You expect a yellow card to come out, but I don't think he's going to do that, you know. But again, credit for Cissé, great determination on the far side to line that up and to play uh, Jordan in. That really was uh, great stuff by Cissé, yes again, but look, all, all focus on the penalty, James Poole lining it up, Brown. Yeah, James Poole about to take his first penalty for Altrincham Football Club, who lead here by four goals to three. We've got uh, two and a half minutes plus added time to go. Here comes a further substitution uh, for uh, Chorley. I think it's uh, Sean Tewton, the man on loan from Spennymoor, who's just come on. Um, not too sure he's disappeared, but uh, it might be Marcus Carver. Here comes Poole. Oh, not the best penalty, but it's in the corner. He stopped it a little bit, but I think he knew what he was doing, and that has made it. All trigger, five, surely three. And he's run straight, sprinted straight over and jumped into the arms of Phil Parkinson on the far side. No, yeah, and the keeper went the right way, Brian. I wondered if for a moment. I really did, but that doesn't matter. Full credit to him because he has to wait a long time there, you know, while Scott Miller was treated and then helped off, and then the substitute came on. That's a real test of nerve for anybody, wasting all that time, so much riding on it. Nerveless penalty, though. He didn't make the greatest connection with it, but it's right in the corner, which is what counts. 5-3. Yeah, we've seen a, a sort of tendency in uh, recent times uh, at uh, top-level football for finishes to... to, to, to deliberately knock the ball into the floor and bounce it over the keeper. Well, it, that was sort of that type of uh, scuffed effort, but he certainly didn't mean it. But uh, it was it was good enough, it was well placed enough, and it had enough power. And as, uh, as John said, Erwin uh, went the right way, but it was bang in the corner. Here come Chorley now, free kick from Blakeman. Altrincham needs to concentrate, it's a good one. Headed uh, up, clears another header. This time it's got over the bar from the man who's just come on the field, Sean Chuton, and it's... Uh, Altrincham can breathe again. So it's an eight-goal thriller here. It's a remarkable game of football. It really is. I mean, you know, you think a game like this with so much riding on it, two top teams, it'd be tight, it'd be cagey. It hasn't been a bit of that. It's been end-to-end, -end, incident packed. Really a great, great watch. That was a bit of a let-off. That was a really good chance for uh, Tutan. I mean, not far out and completely um, unmarked, and he just headed it way over the bar. Yeah, Tutan... Uh Big signing for Spennymore from Chester earlier in the season. Hasn't really worked out for him at Spennymore. He's now on loan here at uh, Chorley, but a dangerous player. Here come Chorley again. And uh, and there's a final score at Stockport. Stockport have gone down by one goal to nil against Bly. It's a magnificent uh, effort from uh, the Spartans there to win 1-0 one no one nil at uh, Edgeley Park. Here it's 5-3. We've got five added minutes. Good cross by uh, Meppen Walter and Simon Richmond. The Altrincham substitute gets enough on it, heads it out for a corner. So we've still got five minutes to go. Stockport have lost. 
Chorley are on the verge of uh, losing, providing Altrincham can keep things tight in this last five minutes. In it comes Meppen Walter with the header. That's a dangerous one, and there's a foul on uh, there's a foul on Tony Thompson by Sean uh, Tewton. Uh, but uh, to be fair, Chorley haven't given this. No, they, they, they won't. They're probably feeling they get one, they might just have a chance of nicking one uh, late on, but that was a clear foul. I mean, not that Tuesday was doing a great deal, but you can't have any contact with the goalkeeper when in that sort of situation when the ball was just dropping out of the sky into Tony Thompson's hands, virtually on his own goal line. Uh, but no, they, they will keep plugging away, can be sure of that. Tony Thompson clears left-footed into the Chorley half, over Cissé's head, over Teague's head, out for a throw-in. We have got to into the second minute of added time, so we've got just under four minutes to go here. Stockport will be absolutely devastated having uh, lost at home to Bly Spartans, who've now done the double over County this uh, season. I think it was 3-2 up at Croft Park back in November. Here's Jordan Hume. Shepherded, by, shackled by uh, Mepp and Walter, who's uh, won the throw-in. Down in front of the Community Sports Hall, Andy White knocks the ball out. Meppen Walter, longish throw. There's uh, Hannigan. Cottrell knocks the ball forward. Hannigan heads clear. Back by Jake Moulds had a good game for the Robins. Here's uh, Andy White. White to C says had a terrific game. And uh, the ball's knocked forward by uh, Dale Witham. Goes out for a throw. And Altrincham fans in fine voice over to our right 1597 here at the jay davidson stadium this afternoon really uh, good crowd here's uh, alex newby newby goes to the byline decent cross and uh, chested back almost dived to the floor sean densmore chested back to uh, tony uh, thompson and absolutely great to see sean densmore get these two really really important goals yeah, absolutely, Brian. But I mean, yeah, first and foremost, I suppose he's a defender. And that was so evident there, wasn't it? That was a real cool uh, head, a real uh, the, the sign of experience, the way he wanted to chest it back to Thompson in a tight position. And he had to sink to his knees to just execute it properly. Great defending, but yeah, brilliant to see him getting forward like that. Because he is an attacking fullback, you get those two goals. Just about to go into the fourth minute of uh, added time, so just under, oh, there's two minutes now left to play. The cross comes in, it's a good one. And there's appeals for a penalty, referee sees it otherwise, it's a free kick to Altrincham. Chorley fans who've certainly thinned out down to our left. Quite a few Chorley fans have seen enough for the afternoon. So a free kick to Altrincham, who've just got to just over 90 seconds to see out here. They lead by five goals to three. It's been a truly wonderful afternoon's entertainment. Long kick from Tony Thompson. Cissé over his head, over Teague's head, out for a throw, and we saw that just a moment ago. It was almost an exact repeat. Altrian fans really uh, loving this. Five goals scored this afternoon on the back of seven last week. Uh, this team really is something to watch. And Jordan Hume keeping the ball. That eventually it's gone out. But, uh, there's a throw in over on the far side. Uh, here's... Uh, Andy Teague to take it. Uh, and Sean Densmore has just been uh, voted the Altrincham man of the match. Courtney Mepp and Walter for Chorley. Um, up goes, that's a foul on uh, Jake Mott. So we're uh, we've only now got about 35 seconds to go. So Altrincham are going to be taking all three points here. It's a, a free kick uh, just outside the penalty area. Tony Thompson's uh, going to take it. Towards uh, Cissé, headed clear by Teague. Here's uh, Elliot Newby. James Poole wins the throw in. So uh, we'll, now we're, we're waiting for the, the referee to blow now. Just a few seconds uh, left. We've had eight goals here at the Jay Davidson Stadium this afternoon. Five of which to Altrincham, three to Chorley. Great afternoon, two good sides. There it goes. Phenomenal stuff by the Robins. The uh, 
The OGM bandwagon continues. The march towards the playoff continues. It's been a great afternoon's entertainment. And Altrincham have nailed the ghost of that 4-1 defeat at Victory Park in January against the then league leaders. We say this every week, but uh, Altrincham Football Club have had another fantastic afternoon. Terrific game of football. It's finished Altrincham 5, Chorley 3. And we're talking to manager Phil uh, Parkinson. Phil, uh, that game just had uh, pretty much everything. Yeah, it was a fantastic game for the spectators. Bit of a heart attack on Sos when they got it back to 3-3. But overall, I thought we thoroughly deserved the win. Um, I thought we were superb today, but... I think everybody who's been watching us all season can see that we're coming into form at the right time. And you've just seen two of the top scoring teams in the league go head to head and we've come out on top. So I think that takes us top of the scoring charts now, which is pleasing to see. And it just shows what we're all about. We didn't show any fear. We, we, we really had a go at them. We didn't sit off them. We, we went, as we always do from the off, to try and attack and try and win the game. And it's paid dividends today. Two goals up just after half time. A great individual effort from Jordan Hume and a wonderful uh, header from uh, Tom Hannigan. But surely back in it straight away. And Andy Teague, who scored a fantastic goal last week, has, has, has scored a, a really good header and then a fantastic volley. Well, it just shows how good their defenders are at attacking set pieces and scoring goals because. As you said, Mepin Walters too with his head. People will say, why don't you stop him? Because he's very good at doing it. It's a bit like they'll probably be wondering why they've not stopped our forwards today because our forwards are very good at attacking and interplay and linking play and they, they found that a real handful and we found them a real handful from set pieces. But I must admit it was very satisfying for, for Tom Hannigan to get that uh, header there because, again, it's not something we work on massively, but we give them good information. But Neil, in particular, in the training sessions, heavily works on playing through. It's something we really believe in, and we, we're seeing the, the fruits of that labour today. At 2-2, uh, um, the game was very much in the balance, but we always looked cr capable of scoring further goals. In the end, it was a wonderfully worked uh, goal. Sean Densmore's put us ahead after some really good work from, uh, from Jordan Hume, but a terrific effort. Yeah, I thought Dens was exceptional today, and again... One of the reasons uh, the other lads probably play is that, that front play that Dens brought us today and he's, he's, he's really given me a lot of food for thought because the way he went forward today is exactly what I expect from my fullbacks. And not that he doesn't deliver on that, he does, but he had end product today as we could see, not just the scoring but the interplay when he was linking him, coming inside, he really had the bit between his teeth and you knew he was going to score that free kick today, he was ever so positive and he could have had an hat-trick with a, the long-range shot he had, I thought he was absolutely outstanding today. Ironic, really, because um, with John Johnson not on the pitch, he might not have had that free kick if JJ had been there. Mm, I don't know the way he was playing. It would have been an interesting discussion and I would have liked to have seen him come out on top there, Denzel JJ. But, yeah, listen, overall, what a fantastic day for the fans. They've had the money's worth today, as I like to think. We, we always try and give them that. And I was speaking before the game and we were saying we don't always get it right, but we try and be positive and... We put lads out on the on the field and on the bench and in the squad who who want to do well for the football club. And I think if you've got a group of players who are willing to do that and pull together and buy into the training and put in the philosophy into into the way we play on the pitch, I think we're seeing all them little things that we've tried to put in place coming good at the end of this season. So long may it continue. Josh Hancock was unavailable today, but Max Harper thought has come in and done a terrific job. And then ultimately James Poole's come on and, and scored the, the goal that sealed the game from the penalty spot. Yeah, the depth of the squad is great at the moment. Obviously, Billy going back is a bit of a blow, but Ben coming back in Tuesday gives us that strength and depth again as long as he can remain fit. That, that's obviously the question mark, but he's, he's come through another loan spell looking good. So people keep saying what you're going to do next season, people bringing in, and I've always... I've always stuck by the philosophy of being loyal to players. I think you could see that last season when they've done well. And I know there's a few players probably sitting there wondering where the futures lie, but when they play like that, it's really easy decisions for me. They're going to be here at the start of next season unless they tell me otherwise, because that's what you want. It's not always the best individuals. It's the best group that get results and get through a season. And like I said, I think we've got a fantastic group, a fantastic depth to that group, a real togetherness and uh, an un 
an unresolving willingness to sort of see games through when they're up against it and come back in adversity. And when they get it back to 3-3, the momentum massively sways in their favour, a bit like at Telford on Tuesday. But what great desire, great attitude the players have shown there to say, no, we're not going to let this happen to us. And they come back and win the game. They didn't just settle for it. They didn't sit off. They've gone and really gone for the win and they've got the rewards for that. It's fascinating now, both in terms of the race for the title between um, Stockport County and Chorley and the race for playoff uh, place. It's getting very tight. Yeah, it's going to be... Well, they're all great games, aren't they, now at the end of the season, particularly at the top of the table. But Chorley, Stockport, wow, what a big game that is on Saturday. Um, if I wasn't here, I'd certainly be going to watch that one. But um, listen, Chorley, you've got to give Chorley a lot of credit. They've come here and we've been on top form of late and we've really given them a game and obviously beat them in the end, but they didn't lie down. They made it really difficult for us, and I wish them all the best going into that final game against Stockport. But a phenomenal game of football at the Jay Davidson Stadium this afternoon, and we're talking to the man who scored two goals, Sean Densmore. Sean, um, great game to watch. What was it like to play in? It's up there with one of the best I've played in since I've been here. Um, you know, two good signs. I think the gaffer mentioned before the game with the two highest scorers in the league. Um, so the likelihood is um, the big goals in the game, but yeah, it was uh, end to end. It was frustrating. We let the two goal lead slip uh, so quick after we we established it. Um, but you know they're a, they're a big strong side. They're a threat off set plays. Um, I thought generally we defended them pretty well, but you know given given the size of them, they're going to win a couple. But um, just uh, thrilled that we could hang on and get the three points. First half, I think one 0 was was about right. We deserved to be ahead. We were the, the better side, uh, but we knew the second half was going to be a challenge. It was a big boost to get the goal from Tom Hannigan. I thought it was a great header from Tom from a really good delivery. Yeah, great ball from John. He uh, he put a good few balls in first half, which the the lads defended pretty well. But it was a great shape on it, and um, you no know, Tom's elders man off. He's he's a threat in the air, as is uh, James Jones. Um, so Tom got us the goal, which as I say, gave us the two goal cushion. Um, Probably could have had a couple more first half, some balls which flashed across the face of goal. JJ was a bit unlucky with one and Yusuf, who was different class, he was uh, he run them ragged on that side. Uh, he, was a, he was a threat all game. Um, but yeah, as I say, it was just a little bit frustrating once we got two goals in front that we let them back into it. But uh, we, we more than merited it when it happened. Andy Teague, who's uh, normally a central defender, was playing right wing back today, but he's got got Chorley back in the game immediately with a header and then a fantastic strike. He scored a really good goal last week as uh, as well. At that point, uh, it looked as if Chorley might go on and take all three points. Yeah, it was a bit unlucky, the second one. I think, um, I'm not sure if it was Sean or Andy White's tried to clear and it's just ricocheted and it's fell nicely to him. Fair play, he's, 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 he's caught a great strike. Um, but as you say, yeah, we were probably under the cosh a little bit for for five or ten minutes after that but you know we weathered it um, stuck at what we're good at which is you know we, we managed to get back on the ball and keep the ball and managed to get ourselves in front again We always did look uh, capable of, of scoring uh, further goals and the third goal uh, we do seem to have this ability to open up teams even inside their own area and you've combined really well with Jordan Hume and uh, in the end you picked your spot and Matteo with no chance Yeah he's done great George not just for the goal all, all afternoon he's He's, he's bullied three big centre halves there, pretty much um, on his own. Uh, you wouldn't look at him uh, when you look at him. You wouldn't expect him to be as strong as he is, but he's uh, he was different class and he he done great for the goal. You know, he's got his back to goal, uh, laid it off for me, and um, seen a little gap in the the keepers near post and just slid it in. It was a nice feeling, yeah. Surely have come back again. Courtney Meppen Walt's a good header, which we couldn't quite keep out. It was a really well directed effort. But uh, you scored the fourth goal from a free kick, and uh, we made the substitution at the time. James Poole has come on, and he's dummied it. Uh, you look very confident that you're going to get it over the wall and uh, and, and somewhere near the goal. It's been good. That's about a perfect range for me. Uh, obviously, a lot of the lads haven't been here that long. No one believes me that I was uh, good at free kicks. Um, I haven't really got near any since since the gap has come in, um, you know, because we've got a lot of quality in the forward areas. But yeah, it was a perfect angle, perfect range. I think Pooley fancied it when he came on as well, but I think he's actually made a good run. Pooley, he's uh, dummied over the ball, which has moved the keeper. I think the keeper might have been a bit planted when I've struck the, the free kick, but uh, just delighted to see it going again. And then obviously we got the pen and got the extra two goal buffer, which uh, just made it a little bit easier to see it out.